So while people join up, we are going to show this video and then we will introduce our special guest for the evening and get right into it. All right, so let me share my screen with you guys once again. And here we go. It's a little embarrassing, a little embarrassing, but we really wanted to end this show with a bang We absolutely did. Oh, I got an idea. I got an idea. <laughs> whoa, whoa, ah. dude, relax. <laughs> Any ideas ahead. better? Check this out. Whoa, wait. What? The bowling, bowling ball. ball. One, two, three. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, inside the bowling ball. But when it all comes down to judging magic, it comes down to a trick. And one good trick can make all the difference in the world. And the bowling ball in the shark was a great trick. Justin and Adam. That one, that was perfect. No, let, me, let me stand right here. Can I stand right here? Oh, nice. Can you do me a favor? Would you mind taking that off, handing it to him? I have one ring. I only have one ring. Everybody can see the ring. People didn't see it, so I want you to look closely. Because okay. you can actually see it, hit it, and you actually go back through wow. it. Wow! Okay. A lot of people think it's going through the finger. In order to go through the finger, you can see it go through You can actually see it happen. <laughs> Don't move either. If you move, this will mess up everything. Hold on right there. Listen closely. You hear it? Watch, watch, watch. Just don't move, don't move. Everybody see it jump to his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> grab it, grab it off. I've never left from this spot, basically this area, right? Did you see it jump to his shoulder? Oh, look at the <laughs> No! Grab it, take it off. Did you see it jump to her shoulder? Hey, KJ, you're not... Hey Will, your mic is on. <laughs> hey guys, so we had we had a little bit of uh, a little bit of technical difficulties there, but you get the picture. You get the picture. <laughs> this is uh, amazing. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna play it again. He'll just show you the damn oh, magic. Good. So uh, just a, a little bit of housekeeping before we bring our guy in. Uh, we have Will Bradshaw here. He'll be taking questions for you. Uh, if you have a question, you can go ahead and use the Q and A feature. Hey Will, what's up, bro? Zoom. And there he is. Oh, now hey, guys. Mike's on. Good, good. Your mic is off when you want it to be off, and it's on when you, 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 you get the other thing. That's not Give it up, Abu. That's right. So, um, <laughs> and you thought the feedback was the worst part. You thought the feedback was the worst part. That's right. No, the feedback was the feedback was fine. But hey, Cage. Hey. <laughs> Oh, we're all good. That's, that was the first time using my second screen there as my Zoom screen sharing screen. And for some reason, it kept minimizing the video, which just showed you my like creepy Houdini backgrounds. But, Killer uh, desktop background, hey, though. That's a great yeah, picture. It, worked. it yeah. works. It works. I mean, people yeah. can still look at that. I'm a fan, as you can voice. tell. Yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's show some love and uh, show, uh, you can throw some questions in the comments. You can. Uh, we actually do need the comments to start generating here. So if you guys want to throw some questions in the comments for our guests, you can use the Q&A, uh, the Q&A function down at the uh, bottom of the screen here, or you can just drop questions right into the chat on uh, on the webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Miller. Hello, how are you guys doing? Good, good, good. Well, cool. thank you so much for coming. Here. Yeah, thank we'll, you. We'll, yeah, we are getting some uh, and Will, Will will actually be taking questions here, so I'm going to try not to not to let my attention divert too much over to. The By the way, thank you, Will. I really appreciate that. You rock, dude. You're the best, like, dude. Thank you. Will, it's you can hard, put your camera back on now. Hard job. Not an easy job. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a tough one. I'm out of coffee. Can you talk for a second? <laughs> I'm out of coffee. Absolutely. Welcome to Sunny ninety five. It's a uh, light, cool AM here. <laughs> And what? your microphone is off, Will. All right, so, oh, he knows, he knows. <laughs> all right, so, uh, so Justin. Yeah. How, first of all, how are you doing, man? I'm, I'm great, man. I've, I'm enjoying the apocalypse. How about you? The apocalypse, uh, well, it hasn't been that enjoyable. Really? I mean, it's, it's been really, no, it's been really good for me. It really has. It's been, it's been pretty amazing. Yeah. A I can, constant, I can, I can, I can, a, a constant throw of, you know, just being thrown into a, a pit of politicians 
Oh, that yeah. and the mental torture is absolutely fucking insane. One hundred percent. But yeah. as far as like everything else is going. <laughs> I, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little disheveled looking here because I don't, I'm not, I, I don't, I, I'm not a politician that tells everyone they have to stay inside and not get haircuts, so I can't get a haircut every couple of days. <laughs> that's that's uh, <laughs> that's good. That's too real. That's yeah, too real, eh? it is. Anyway, I don't want to get, I don't want to get into the weeds with you on that. We're here to talk about it madness. Is. Although deception is uh, <laughs> is related. A lot of a lot of deception and misinformation going around. Yeah, a lot of it. Yeah, but any, but anyway, um, at least we're here. We know that we don't need masks while we're on Zoom. That's so right. As, as That's long right. as the as long as it doesn't uh, transmit through the through the screen here. Uh, tell us, create creativity. Now mm. you suggested the name for this talk mm. to mm. be glor uh, glorious torture. Mm. That that rings. I'm sure anyone that's got a creative mind that puts time into creating material, creating content. Um, and, and really, in fact, putting together works of art, that, that probably rings true with them in some way. But can you expand upon that? Can you be specific? What do you mean when you say glorious torture? Oh, wow, well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the perfect way to describe how, to, how a, a, the process of creation really, because there is no, you know, I, that's the one question. How do you do this? How do, where do your ideas come from? I wish I could just go, here's a bottle. It's all in here. Here's the, have fun, enjoy. That's, I would wish I could do that. But you and I both know that it doesn't work that way. It could, it, 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 so many different uh, things cause that creativity process. It could be music. It could be nature. It could be a thought process. It could be, who knows what it is. It's just something Something, something happens that, that catches your attention or your thought process and that train just starts moving, right? And, and now you're on this journey. You're on this journey of like, you don't know where you're going, right? So whether you start with, like, for magic, whether you start with like a plot first or whether you start from like a, just a, like just nothing, um, which are two totally different ways of, of, of process creativity as well, uh, but they fit into this glorious torture type thing. Um, get that. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and uh, I wish I had a beeper right now. And by the way, can I just before we, like, get it really into this? I, I swear to you, I need to have my ringtone. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, get, get your, uh, what, is it, what, what do you say? Get your sponge balls and get ready. Oh, yes. Oh, I love, I love oh my God. trailer from baby RJ Cantu. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> I love him to death, but that's just the funny. I want my ringtone to be that. All right, get your sponge balls now. Oh, yes, please. Welcome yes, please. to Extreme yeah. Sponge Balls. That's right. Get your sponge balls ready. Right. <laughs> Whatever he says. I'm going to learn ex get your sponge balls ready. Yeah. He makes it sound like there's knives in them or there's like, like, like fucking like needles and stuff. Like it's like, it's like a dance. It's like Dan Sperry doing sponge balls. Well, everything has to be extreme nowadays. It's the extreme. It's the best. It's the, ah, oh God, that we could go into a whole different podcast on that thing. Yeah. Um, but so, so getting back to glorious torture. So, so you're on this process, you're on this journey, you don't really know where it's going. And then all of a sudden it starts kind of coming together a little bit at a time. And then you start trying things out, trying different methods. And a lot of them like just fucking fail. They fail. And you're mm. like, shit, shit. Okay. That didn't work. What am I going to do now? And you're like, okay, okay. And then sometimes you got to take them on the back burner completely because they just will destroy your life. They will ruin your life as you're trying to think. a bad relationship with an idea or a thought right mm. and uh and you oh interesting jo hey justin hold, hold up just a sec for some reason this camera that, that this main camera that you're looking at here is uh, is having trouble uh is this this computer that you're on is lagging or something like that is it possible to turn the mic on on your on your secondary camera i'm going to pin that video right now because um, for some reason, oh, there we go. You're back now. But now we can't really hear you. Well, what is? Oh, going there on? we go. Now it, it it caught up somehow. Weird is uh, you know you gotta love these uh, technology things, right? Yeah, we're we're all doing what we can, right? I agree completely. Where did we stop talking? Actually, let me turn this off. Where did we stop at? What did you guys hear me last? Uh oh my goodness. He was talking about how a routine will destroy himself. Yeah, it'll destroy it'll destroy your life. But now we're we're all on the edge of our seats, um, waiting to learn how. 
<laughs> okay. Sorry about that. So I shut down the uh, the main computer. That way it won't interfere. Um, okay. So um, uh, what we're talking about the um, a routine. A routine will destroy your life. Yeah. No. A thought. Not not a routine necessarily. Just, but just an idea of how something could be done or a method of how it could be done. Like if you let it fester in you and you, and you don't have an outlet for it, if it's not, there's no home for it yet because it hasn't been put into anything. It can just, it's like just uh, the plot. Okay. So the plot of um, uh, Larry Jennings, uh, Invisible Paul Maces, right? Paul yeah. Harris's Invisible Paul Maces. Okay. The, 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 it's a beautiful trick, right? It's a, it's a beautiful trick, but there's one problem with that trick. It's that last damn card that last damn card right. you don't you shouldn't have to bring that card back to the deck why is the deck being picked up you know these thoughts right these fucking thoughts and you're like what the hell so that's that's it's and that's one of the one that, that i allowed to fester because i i want to and i still haven't found it yet in magic unfortunately um and i have like 17 versions of it to just try to get to that level that i'm not happy with mm. um and so that's the torture part right that's just the Oh man, is this thought or idea ever going to have a home? Am I ever going to be able to get this done? And any man or any concept, but I am afraid that I won't uh, accomplish everything I want to do in life before I die. That's that scares me, you know. Um, and that's part of the creative process. We are always thinking about these things. You're you're so enthralled with this. You know, I live, breathe, eat, and sleep magic. That's all I do. Everything in my life is magic. Um, uh, so it's, it's, it, when you live that way, it's just, it's just, it takes over sometimes and you have to, you also have to learn through that, like meditation and just learn to step away from a, from an idea or a thought sometimes. Um, and if you're in it for four hours, you know, and you're working on something for like, let's say four hours, you still haven't gotten anything. It's very frustrating to just let go of it. And it's mm -hmm. very like, it's, it's, it's hard for me to let go of it. I, cause I want to finish it and I just, I can't do it. So, um, and sometimes it's, it's a lot of in a way yeah exactly very much so very much so uh and so a lot of times it's better to just like sleep it off or do something else situation get, get outside of that thought process doing something else mundane right even taking a walk um and then when you come back to it you have kind of a fresh perspective of what to see with that so glorious torture just kind of goes through that whole process and of course the glorious part it's a twofold part. It's when it actually comes together into something that's beautiful, a piece of art and this thing that you've, you've created out of nothing or you've created from a plot or an idea or whatever. And then the other glorious part is the actual journey. It really is a glorious experience to create something. It's, it's in, it, 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 it puts up so many endorphins. It, it, it throws the chemicals in, in your body into this, this whirlwind of just an orgy. It's just amazing experience. It feels so good. Um, and you want it over and over again, you know? Uh, but sometimes you get writer's block with this kind of stuff. And he's like, I, I, every time I create something new, I don't, I don't think all the time like this anymore, but I, I catch myself some. Every time I created something new, I had no fucking clue where the next thing was going to come from. I had no idea. And it always scared me, dude. I was just like, I don't know what, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you, and when, and when you have like 17 releases through illusionist or 18 or whatever, you all, and you know, you were on the second one, like, where's the third one going to come from? Okay. There's that one. Now I got to get it. It's just, oh, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like the same kind of torture. I think like back in the day when record companies would really like push, uh, artists that you have to have 17 songs or 18 songs or 19 songs on an album it, and they would just like just take filler sometimes and put it on an album mm. because they didn't they didn't have it right but that doesn't that's, feel right right it, no it doesn't feel right and that's why they started selling them at uh, instead of albums they started selling them song by song because a lot of people realized that they didn't like a lot of the songs in the albums that they got the, they're like maybe one or two songs and that's why that became a real big popular market that itunes just kind of just kind of owned right um, so so that's the glorious torture that's that's the whole process uh and it, it's both it's and it's and it's glorious at all times and they're fighting over to which one wins the entire time repeat it's that crazy. last sentence you dropped audio for a second it's glorious torture yeah, it's you said uh, you dropped audio from it in the last sentence mm. about people fighting at all times. So oh yeah, no, those two thoughts are those two concepts are always fighting mm. against your head or in your mind as you're doing this creation. It takes a lot to create. 
but I don't think people understand. It just takes a lot out of you. It just does. Yeah, absolutely. And whatever you, or if you're doing music or magic or poetry or whatever you do, you know. But that, just, and the thing is, it's like, um, if you make yourself into a creator or if you're trying to accomplish something, it's a little different than like, I mean, obviously it's, it, there's, there's a craft to it. There's a process to it. But there's no guarantees. It's almost entrepreneurial in nature because you, you're taking a major risk by putting any kind of mental effort into something. You don't know if anything good is going to come out of it. It's a really good. Oh man, we lost, oh, we lost you for a sec. Back up. You were, you were complimenting my point. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, sucks. Um, All right. Sorry about that guy. I don't know what's going on. You said that's, you said that's a really good point. And then. Yeah, that's a really good point. And on the marketing aspect of that same point, um, you end up uh, putting something out and you don't know if it's going to sell, if it's going to be like, if people are going to enjoy it or actually perform it. And so let's say you put $5,000 into a project and it, it, it wasn't a good project. Of, like it just didn't, it just didn't hit the market the way you thought it was going to hit the market. Uh, that's a big, like, you're like, man, do I even want to do this again? Like you never know. You just never know if it's going to be, you just don't man. Yeah. yeah. I think more, I think, I think there's more insecurity in creators than there are in performers. I really believe that. I really, if the truth came out, I really believe that. <laughs> there's the truth there. Yeah. You didn't have to work very hard for, to, to get the truth out of you, Justin. Well, listen. That's, <laughs> that's a pattern, right? Yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> yeah, good, good. So, um, yeah, and another thing that, you know, I've noticed about that kind of work, or if you're doing creative work, or especially if you're a gig worker or anything like that is, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can't, maybe this is where that anxiety you were just referring to comes from, because you can never, um, you can never shut it off. Mm. Uh, and, and it's not, it, I don't think it's like, it's like a, like a heroic, like, oh, I'm always a magician thing for me anyway. It's just like, every moment that you're not applying yourself to the creation of a new product mm -hmm. is a moment that you're choosing not to do that. Right. And so if you're watching yeah. Breaking Bad or something like that, you, you, you're, everything you do is an investment in, in coming back onto that. Like if you're doing something mindless, it almost feels like you're just straight up wasting time. No is relaxation. So on point, man, I don't play video games for that fucking reason. Mm. I used to play, I used to be a great, a, a, just a fun video game player. I love video games. I love PlayStation. It's my, I just, I love it. Um, I got a PS4. I, I've been tempted in my head. But I'm like, but if I'm doing that, I'm not, I'm not creating. I'm not working. I'm not like, I, I don't go to bed until 6am because I don't to waste the bedtime. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I could be creating or researching or, or whatever the hell I'm doing. Um, God, that's such a great point, man. Such a great point. Yeah, well, that's yeah. that's that's. You feel like you're being. You feel like you're too. you're cheating yourself out of something. Mm. I, I really believe. I feel like like the next thing that I really need to have happen. It could be that one moment if I just would have stayed with it for just ten more minutes or whatever. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, there's a regret yeah. there too. Yeah. Oh yeah. God, it's it's a glorious torture, baby. There's no way else to describe it. It's just and because it, it really messes with your mental ability to kind of see the situation because you're so in it you're in this situation right and i think that's why it's super super important if you're a creator um performers as well but if you're a creator to really have a, a small little team that you can communicate with Ooh, i'm very for that. i'm very fortunate to have adam wilbur gregory wilson paul harris michael weber i'm very fortunate to have mcbride i'm very fortunate to have certain people that i can just go hey is this shit do you like, you know what I mean? Just be honest. Like the honesty is there uh, without it being, you know, I trust all of their, you know, professional opinions on, on certain things. Um, right. So <clears throat> it's very, I'm very fortunate to have that. Uh, and, and, and creators need that. It's very, very important. Very important. So it's yeah. good. What you just mentioned there was, it was actually a, um, you know, I mean, we've been talking about sort of just the pain of, <laughs> of the situation. Yeah. But let's, let's guide people through a couple of, concrete things you know we want to we want to respect the audience and give them some stuff they can really sink their teeth into mm. um so you did just mention having a team you know i mean you've got access to all of these all of these people who are really great in the community uh maybe some people have less access to to that type of uh that type of talent or or maybe not maybe there's hidden talent everywhere and everyone's just good at their own thing mm. but 
you know, you, you spoke to the importance of having a team there. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, listen, if you don't have a team there, it's creating in a vacuum. When you create it in a vacuum, you don't have, you know, so when you have a library of knowledge of people who know the history of magic, mm -hmm. the history of mentalism. So that's one aspect of it. You have a library of footage of all these people having, being a performer and have been a, a, a known in the magic community or in the mentalism community. So you have that aspect of it. You have some of the greatest minds in magic and mentalism that you, so all these ideas can just bounce off you, boom, 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 boom. Um, so it's important when you pick your team and you, and I really say pick your team because you are picking the team. It's really important. Right. You have to, you have to pick a team that you, it's okay for them to say that, you, that they don't like that and you're not going to get offended or you're, go who the fuck are you that kind of you're not going to get an attitude or something because unsolicited uh you know uh, advice or criticism is really not what it's supposed to be it's 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 more for the person doing it to the person you know it's, it's more like a it's not a good thing unsolicited i, I never liked unsolicited it doesn't make sense to me nobody asked you because i sure what you think about this mm. um so but and so you have to ask well, where is that coming from where where do people usually first person right uh but uh, but to be able to show somebody something and go hey what do you think about this have you seen this before is this boom 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 so i would encourage every single person to to if you have something and you have ideas and you have thoughts and you have routines that you don't think it's been done before if you have different twists on things that you think should there in the magic and into the into the history of magic like me reach out to people like eric ross reach out to people like dan sperry these are and i'm telling you these are the people who are very open and willing to to help people well adam wilbur is the exact same way um so reach out to us we we want to hear what you have to say I, I i think it's an important aspect um but i a lot of times though kent they see here's the problem they want that but then what they they just want you as the person they know that kind of known to go, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. That's mm -hmm. what they're hoping for. Do that and you're honest with them. They're like, fuck you, who are you? I'm like, what the, you came to me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't wake up and come to you. What's going on right now? Um, so that's, it's, it, it's really, it's really an iffy thing. You got to read it well. And uh, that's why I go through like different just with people or emails before I even start talking about those things. And then I'll start talking about that stuff. And I'm like, listen, if you really want me to be honest, I'll be. Yeah. Okay. So we, hold on. We lost you for a sec. You said, listen, if you want, if you really want me to be honest, then. Yeah. Listen, if you want me to be brutally honest, I have to be brutally honest because if I don't, it, it just, it hurts you and it hurts me and it hurts the craft. So we right. have to be honest with each other. And that's the one thing we've kind of lost without the mentoring ship, you know, YouTube kind of destroyed that unfortunately in that aspect is that we don't have we still we have it still but it's secret it seems like it's more secret and private but we don't really have that mentoring student relationship that we used to have that magic is really used to to travel these secrets to each other you know what i mean yeah um, and 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 so we that 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 background of people and and you you'll know right away when you're talking to somebody like i click with this person you know what i mean like sure. Adam and i have this thing we're each other's professional muses 100 percent it like instantly when we get together dude we just have 17 different ideas where there was none and then all of a sudden bum, 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 and just we just it's amazing it's it's like it's liquid gold absolutely liquid gold wow uh, i was very fortunate to have that with wilbur not with just wilbur but with harris and and weber and and certain people and sperry and ross i have that with those and mcbride so um i've been fortunate to have it with a lot a lot of people so i try to surround myself with people who are way smarter than me <laughs> way smarter than me <laughs> okay to give yourself some credit oh, we so stand on shoulders of giants right yeah right right so 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 that's having a team and that's the importance of having a team right i mean you bounce ideas off of each other you become each other's what you said professional muses i like that yeah. um and and you honestly really, it's a yeah 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 and you really know when it clicks too yes very um, much so yeah. And and it's really important to be honest as well. There's so often, you know, I mean, here's here's an example from my past. I'm sorry, Wes, if you're if you're watching this, but uh, 
somebody somebody goes up and they and, and they they go to the, the front of the magic club and they do this thing, right? Kicking out the back and they go right. like this. Right. Look at that, it changes. Right. And right. And it, probably not quite as good as I was just doing it there, but you know, and it was like, what do you what what do you, what do you guys think of that? I've been working on that, and there and it's like, oh, it's great, it's great, it's great. Right. Right. It's yeah. Great. There's no honesty, right? And that guy thinks, oh wow, this is okay. People say the word great. and and instead of instead of improving upon that or the moment in which he was doing that in, in a routine it's just like everyone then brings in their own color change it's like oh well, yeah my shitty color change well here's my shitty color change here you could do this instead <laughs> that's right that's right yeah and it's like there it's wasn't not, a, there wasn't honesty in the beginning like that looks like shit that absolutely looks horrible that, that's you don't do it that it's like the, what is it and, and I, I can just sense that you know maybe on zoom it actually kind of looks good i'm not because <laughs> i'm thinking people might be in the in the in the attendees being like oh, actually you know what i'm gonna try what that. if they're like that actually looks fucking good that's like, yeah. no watch watch like hey where do you learn that from <laughs> yeah talk to, talk to wes hey. <laughs> oh, man. so but yeah that's the that's the thing that kills that that kills magic right is that that's great that's great mm -hmm. it's great mm -hmm. it's great, mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah, there's already enough false confidence in this art. I mean, we don't, it's just. Well, if you think about it, every single person who's successfully completed the card trick has been told they belong on television. That's, oh, why do, what are you doing here, right? You, oh, what are you yeah. doing here, man? The what are you <laughs> doing here moment makes you feel like a god. Absolutely, right? absolutely. I remember hearing that when I was like 12, doing yeah. balls and like, you know. Oh, you should rule the world. Should, yeah, you're right, right. You're going you're, you're gonna to be living in Vegas. And I did, I ended up living in Vegas, but um but yeah you should be in vegas you should be you know all this stuff and uh it's so funny how like um it's interesting yeah huh. Huh. so so aside from having a team what's another thing that somebody can do sort of to concretely like ignite that spark well i mean i i did a, a dissertation on this uh i wrote a paper on it um the idea that um you there is no hey let's sit down and this is what we're doing and yay here's the baby there's not like you know that cut and dry right but there are certain things that we can do to foster that creative energy mm. um taking looks is really 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 good really good it gets your mind to just just look at nature look at places and try to take walks like don't try to take walks like you know under bridges and shit like take like take walks like where there's open you know fresh you know everything in nature and trees and you're seeing birds and you're hearing nature you're hearing the world around you um that it's 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 sort of used as a uh, a filter kind of just filter out all the other bullshit for a while um uh also meditation is a really important aspect uh med and i i i try to do it as many Oh, we lost you for a sec. You try to do it as many. Yeah, I try to do it as many times as I possibly can with like a set meditation type thing. Mm. But just even stopping and just wherever you are, like literally for like maybe two minutes and just go, close your eyes. And it's 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 very refreshing. Refreshing. Uh, my R's are getting weird. Uh, so um, what do I do with my hands? What do I do with my hands now? Um, I will people yell. I do that voice simpsons did it first um <laughs> but uh uh yeah so so i think that's really really important to do um just even taking little two minute breaks and just kind of stop because we this is all whatever the hell this is this reality this world this understanding of life um it's very tiring it's a very tiring process living it just mm -hmm. is um outside of anything else just being a human just that thing is just it's tiring. It's very tough. Um, and we need to stop and separate ourselves from that kind of moment from just us knowing that we're a living creature and stuff. Right. Close our eyes. You kind of just get, you know, connect uh, more into the so, ether, if you will. Also a good, uh, a good, good uh, habit of uh, food, you know, good diet, I think is really important. Exercising mm -hmm. as much as you can. Don't have to exercise every day. I'm not a fucking bodybuilder, but I exercise. I do what I have to do. Yeah, the serotonin um, release is very good for your for your mom. Absolutely, definitely. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Um, 
Uh, do, do things outside of magic. Don't just don't do magic all the time. Don't do mentalism mm -hmm. all the time. Don't perf don't whatever you're doing. Don't do it all the time because you're going to, you're going to, you know, and burning out is a really tough thing to go through. Right. Um, because a lot of people don't know how to get back quickly enough. I used to be one of those people. Then I learned like, you know, there's ways and steps to actually get back into it much quicker than what I was before. Um, so I think that's really, really, really important. Um, and, and like I said, like read a book or, you know, just have nothing to do with your, whatever your craft is, just get away from it completely. Right. And, and also Play some PlayStation four. Well, nope, not that. <laughs> nope, then, not the, that. You, no, absolutely. Cause then you're not wasting. That thing. Now, now there's a lot you're wasting. Now you're just wasting time. Right. Um, but do things, you know, be around and be around other people that, that, that you don't agree with maybe necessarily, like just be around people that's not like you, you sure. know? Too many people are around people like themselves and they just don't hear other people. Like, it's just ridiculous. And that's happening a lot in the world today right now. That's how the, bu so, the bubbles form, right? right? That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. So we don't want that. We don't want oh. that bubble. We want, we want to be around people that you can disagree with, you know, get in lively conversations with people. Just try to do things outside of magic as much as you can so that when you come back to magic, when you come back to performing or creating or whatever you're doing, Man, there's such there is there's such an appreciation for it that you maybe didn't have before. Yeah. Okay. So so let's 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 take it piece by piece because maybe the maybe maybe this will be useful to people. So mm -hmm. a lot of people, or this is me, I'm speaking for myself, but maybe this is something that people can relate to. You get an idea happens. Okay. Now, there's no magic formula for that. If you don't get ideas, this is not the place to fix that you know maybe get some more omegas into your diet who the hell knows that's right but, <laughs> yeah eat some more fish what are you doing yeah right 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 or or don't eat animal products at all that's a possibility um hey how do you know somebody's vegan what do you met them I don't mean, worry they'll fucking they'll tell you right, they'll fucking tell you <laughs> that's right, that's right. but you um, know i am vegan so uh, so you know well, when I, I met was, you, I you weren't like in. that, which was good. You weren't like that at all. You're not. No, I'm not. I'm not really like that. I, I poke fun, uh, uh, but uh, but yeah. If if uh, so, so the experience is getting a uh, getting an idea. It just it, it happens. Whatever. There's no free will. Who knows? Whatever. Blah blah blah. It happens. Right there. There's an idea. Okay. Now what? I love what Hitch I love what said. Remember what Hitch said? He said, "Of course, I of course I believe in free will. I have no choice. I have no choice. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so so yeah. So an idea happens." Now okay. what? Okay, it's an egg. It needs to be fostered. What? What do you mm. do? Mm. Yeah, it, well, it depends what you're. It depends what you're going for. You well, you know? certainly don't just like write it down and throw it away, right? Or or not no, even absolutely, write it down. Absolutely right? not. And I think that's another aspect. It's really important to film every fucking thing you ever come up with. Mm. Film every fucking thing. Two reasons. One. Sure. Re you need to have that on film. It's just important. Why? Because you can go back to those things years later, four months later, whatever, and go, you know, the whole thing wasn't good, but there are some certain things in that I did like, and, you, and you'll fucking just forget it if you don't do it. So it's important. And you, and you want it for prosperity sake, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other reason is if it is good and it hasn't been done before, or it's new or an original or whatever, tries to say that they came up with it, whatever. This is an important aspect. You know, we used to do the whole poor man's copyright thing, right? When you had the, you, 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 you mailed it to yourself, right? Oh, right. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, and, and that worked for whatever long a time because there's just fucking thieves in magic. There's fucking thieves in music. There's fucking thieves in all of art forms, unfortunately, mm. because there's thieves in the world. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's, see, people, when people start thinking like, oh, there's deep, there, there, it's not that there's, like, it's just specific to those places. It's just that there are people in the world. Those people just happen to have that position in wherever they are, being that bad person, mm. right? So, you know, it's the same, it could be the same thing with any, uh, any subject, bad teachers, bad cops, bad lawyers. It doesn't matter. There's bad people. So there's thieves in the world, and that's why there's thievery and magic and music and all that other stuff right in the art forms so sure. and they're gonna steal they're gonna they're gonna take and they're gonna fucking they're, you know it's horrible it's absolutely ridiculous right right um right. what was i talking about we, we were, <laughs> so we were, we were saying when you get when you get an idea right yeah, yeah. Happens, now what like do you i mean is it just a matter of writing it down is it a matter i mean how how do you pursue that's right we're talking about video team we're talking about video team. Right. thank you thank you yes so and then so the second reason is so that you can um 
you can go, no, no, I actually had that idea 10 years ago. Here it is. I also suggest putting ideas just up on YouTube and mm -hmm. putting them private. Oh, right? cool. Yeah, Unlisted yeah, yeah. and not non-listed and not public, but private. That way you have a timestamp of when you came up with this. Mm. And so now you can show that video to that. And I've had to do it before. This guy, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I'm telling you right now, this is I, 12 years ago I came up with this, marketed it and everything, blah, blah, blah. Do you have proof? I'm so happy you asked. <laughs> you, so you, and it's something that there you, you marketed. Now, how would you, how would you respond? Because this is, I we weren't really planning on talking about this, but now this is, a, I know this is something you have a deep interest in. Uh, you had a project here with, um, was it Danny Garcia? Uh, like an anti anti piracy anti uh, uh, piracy. Uh, no, well, anti anti theft and magic, anti anti piracy. Was you mean that, my maps? You mean my maps? I believe maybe magicians against piracy. Yes, yes. Yeah, that was my that was my yeah that was a company I created um, years and years ago when it wasn't as rampant as it is right now, and uh -huh. uh, I had customers like Martin Lewis, Richard Sanders, Jeff McBride, yep. uh, Patrick Cohn. I had um, Rick Lax. Everybody was on board with this. Um, and, um, you know, I, a lot of channels, I took down a lot of uh, tutorials. I took down a lot of, uh, I took down two big major pirating companies. Uh, but the problem was, is that I wasn't creating magic. I wasn't, I wasn't, I was just focused. I was a broker, basically. They hired right. me as a broker. And then I just use my knowledge and get all those things taken off. Um, right. but, but then you take one down, five more pop up in like 30 fucking minutes or 20. It's a hydra, hours. right? I mean, it's, it's absolutely, it's, and it's not, and you can't win. It's, it's, it's impossible now. There's no way to stop it. It's already there. It's a monster. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I was part of maps for a long time. Um, and, uh, I was really proud with what we did, but it was just a little, it was, it was just as, just enough to slow them down a little bit, but ultimately it just can't, it, it's a problem, it's unsolvable. You know, oh, well, we lost your, we lost your audio and video again. We got this one, we got your secondary camera, uh, just fine, but. That's that um, one. Uh, yep, there you go, you're back, you're back. But we do have that one, that one, the other one hasn't uh, messed up yet. So it, it leads me to believe it's there. not your internet, it's, it's the processing in your computer that's on that camera. Gotcha. Um, but anyway, uh, and that, that camera has your mic attached to it, right? So yeah. Uh, so that's why we lose both video and audio. But the other, the other angle, we can always see you. Gotcha. Um, so the reason I, I, talk, I asked about maps was just because we were on the sort of general idea of uh, intellectual copyright law or, or intellectual mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. um, and, and putting these things up on YouTube. Now, a specific question, if I... Uh, and this is just curiosity for me. Let's say I put something up, right? I, I have it filmed, but now somebody, I never marketed it, mm -hmm. right? And somebody into, somebody comes up with it themselves mm -hmm. and then they contact, well, let's just assume it's you. How do you handle that situation? They contact you and say, oh, do you know what this is? And, or you contact them and you say, hey, I came up with that, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, here's the proof. It's not something that I've put out, but yeah, I mean, look, here's the, here's the rule, whether you guys like it or not. Here's the, it's always been the fucking rule, and until another rule comes by, I don't know what else to tell you. The rule is real simple. The first one to publish it or market it gets credit for it. It's always been the rule, and that's it. I don't, I don't, I don't see it changing. Um, you can't, I mean, you see, in those kind of situations, here's what I would do. In fact, I just got off the phone with something with another really big magician who's, who dealt with this exact same thing through a, a magic company about a product they knew it was his, they were going to do it with him. Then they ended up doing it with somebody else, knowing they're taking it from him. They didn't tell the other guy that it was already invented by this other guy. Totally fucked them. Um, and, uh, and the guy, you know what? The other guy contacted him and goes, you know what, dude? Man, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Uh, I'm going to stop all of what I've made off of it, half of it so far. And I'm like, wow, that's a fucking, that's a solid dude, man. And that's what I would do. That's something I would do. I'd say, well, let's do a collaboration. Let's take what you've come up with, what I've come up with, work on some new ideas with it, and let's put a project out together. You and I should have a, we should do a, we should do a podcast or a, or a show all about this. This is impossible to read, I think, but right in, right in my book there. Let me read, let me read, hold on. It says, uh, intellectual property laws are stupid. Just don't be a dick. There you go. There you go. It's like, 
Yeah, and it's, it's, so it's, it's so difficult to navigate the situation. I mean, it's not like you can actually put someone away for taking your move, especially in magic. We it's try to shame them. We, we, the only thing we can do is shame them. We, that's all the power we have, unfortunately, because we don't have right. a police. We don't have a policing. We, just, right. we, I mean, we have self-policing, but, we, but there's no, and, and I think there should be um, at some level. I don't know exactly how that would look. I, you know, I've thought of, about it, but it's still kind of a really gray area. But um, we, we should have some kind of policing where something goes through some pipeline because there's so many people have been stolen from and so many people have been just, just, you know, I, Cornelius, John, rest his soul, man. He came to one of my lectures um, towards the end of his life. Um, about maybe 12 to 10 years before I think I did that lecture tour and we were in Austin and he as I looked at him I'm like he just looked really bad man and it wasn't like just health it was just he looked depressed and emotionally just fucked up in the head and I said dude have you been working on anything you've been whatever whatever and he said no no I don't I don't I don't create I don't do any of that stuff anymore I go why he goes Justin they took everything from me they took everything from me Mm. I'm like, okay. oh, hold on. After he, uh, we we lost you for a second. We're gonna wait for you to yeah, come. Yeah, back. There we go. So you said uh, you said they took everything from me. Yeah, he took everything. Was what? Yeah, he took everything because the, the internet, when people who the, his pen anything was, and still is one of the greatest uh, pen penetrations ever. Um, was stolen and reproduced and copied millions and millions and millions of times and put into magic sets without his permission. Oh, you know? And it's like, you, I saw that. I'm just like, that's one of the reasons I created maps, man, for people like that. Cause I just, it just, you know, then you got people like Paul Harris is like, well, well yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, I mean, seeing a pretty much unsolvable problem. I mean, by law, mm -hmm. we're, we're in, we're in, not to shoehorn in my politics here, but we're in magic is kind of when it comes to intellectual property, it's sort of an anarchistic society. You know, all you have wild Adam Wilber calls it the wild west right now. It's the wild yeah. west of magic. No fucking question. I was looking at I'm gonna rush you. Go ahead. No, no, you're you're no, you're good. I was just saying all, all we have is 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 not being a dick. Like that's all that's really all we have. Please don't be a dick. Like yeah, be a cool yeah. person. Come on. It's pretty dickish cool that Cornelia. I can totally understand somebody taking, oh, that's an amazing idea. I'm gonna make a version of that and whatever. It and I can't I can't think that they are sort of morally it's hard for me to think that they're morally wrong to um mm. to take an idea and roll with it with their either cheaper version or better version or whatever. Mm. But mm but it's aesthetically awful mm -hmm. that Cornelius doesn't like that. He doesn't get credit That's for right. all of those little plastic, like shitty pens inside. That's of the, right. So That's right. There's, it, it's very difficult. How do you even begin to deal with that? Who knows? But Shane, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, I don't think you do. I mean, I, well, I mean, look, you can't beat him. Join him. Fuck it, man. Listen, that's why, that's what China thinks, man. Oh China yeah. Sure, sure. Exactly what you just said. They don't think they're hurting anybody. They think they're putting good, by charging a lower price but they're fucking the creators like crazy man yeah so and then and that's the other thing you get stolen from so much you're just like i don't even want to fucking do this anymore right but and that's 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 the difficult thing about this kind of thing is like glorious torture yeah exactly and how do you how do you know that you know another copperfield isn't created and this is i'm i'm arguing for the for kind of the, the bad guys in in, in a way but mm -hmm. how do you know that because it was cheaper through china another like Copperfield wasn't created by being inspired by the pen through. And it's mm. like, yeah, they have to now trail that back to the original creator and who knows if they'll even do the work, but it's mm -hmm. like, it's just, it's impossible to measure the pros and cons, but it's very visible. The cons. It's a very, it's very strange, visible. It's, it's a very strange thing. Uh, this of, of what we have in magic with crediting and with creation. And it's really bizarre, man. It's, um, it's just the wild west right now. So, so we've got some questions here, and I'm wondering if we can take a couple of these questions that we've, we've got people saying hi in the chat on both sides. Um, uh, Will, have you been putting the, uh, have you, you've been putting all of them in, this, in the Q&A? Uh, so I've been keeping a Word document with all of the Q&As in it. Oh, wonderful. Okay, cool. I, I love yeah, you, Will. You're fucking awesome, dude. Will is right on time. <laughs> You're awesome, brother. You're awesome. Hey, thank you so much. 
So Will, if you don't mind, could you, could you address some of the questions? And we've also got questions right in the Q&A. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, I do, right yeah, I see them. But, yep. Cool. And I've, a, I've added those to the Word document as well, actually. Cool, uh, okay, but, great, great. So yeah. so yeah, Will, if you could take it, I'm actually gonna refill my coffee, but I'm, we're all in the same house except for Justin, so. Good, go ahead. Perfect. Give us a question. Oh, and then Justin, afterwards, uh, I wonder if you could walk us through a couple of situations where you've, where you have, you know, come to a roadblock in a trick. Mm -hmm. Maybe share something with us that we can absolutely uh, try practically, and and yeah, how yeah. you came across the solution. Uh, but we'll do the questions first. So we'll <laughs> take it away. Fantastic. Cool. So the first question is actually by Wizard Sam, and he wanted to know: Does the audience respond more or better on a storytelling magic instead of flashy tricks? Mm, that's a good question. Um, same kind of person that likes horror movies also likes comedies, right? So, mm -hmm. so like, I think audience is just, uh, boy, I think they're ready when a good story is told through and using magic as, as, as kind of like a, um, uh, a slide project, right? It's using the props to kind of create the story and then show the, the story to be what it is. Um, so everybody wants to hear a good story. For some reason, as humans, we love to sit around stories, stories. It's, it's crazy, right? Um, I mean, we sit in theaters and we, and we watch stories that are told to us, right? Directed towards us. Um, but then at the same time, you know, in an action movie, there's always a love story too. There's always something so... I think it's a, I think it's a combination. I mean, uh, what do you mean? I wonder what he means by flashy, meaning like, 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 uh, like movie, like, like cuts and stuff, or maybe like fire. Like, well, I wonder if he could just. Uh, Seems just... to me like, like unless you know, uh, uh, who was it that uh, wizard something? Man, wizard man. Sam. Wizard Sam. So, uh, I, the way I hear that question is the difference between um, tricks that have a narrative and tricks that don't. So tricks that have a- Didn't he uh, say flashy though? Did they say something about flashy? It did flashy? say flashy and um, that implies quick. Okay. To me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to get a clarification on that because I don't know how to answer that because flashy could be really anything. Flashy That's could be, true. look at these moves. Flashy could be fire and it could be anything. I mean- 100%. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, uh, Wizard- Well, we'll, we'll, jump to, we'll, we'll jump to yeah. the next one. And yeah. Yeah. Good question uh, though. Good question, Wizard. Thank you, brother. Cool. Uh, JQ also wanted to know, uh, are you personally creating uh, currently for your own shows or for the market? I'm doing both right now. I'm doing both. I'm consulting for other shows and other people. I'm also creating for my own shows and I'm also creating for the market at the same time. Fantastic. Both is yeah. a really good answer. Uh, an anonymous person wants to know what's your creative process and uh, how do your ideas originate and then go through the process of development? Isn't that this whole thing is what we're doing? Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of like a whole Isn't thing. Isn't that, yeah, I don't, I'd stay tuned. <laughs> there we go. This is the best thing. Well, here, oh, here, yeah. here's maybe a little bit more uh, specific question from uh, Yang is uh -huh. how do you design the spectator's experience? Uh, that's a great question. How do you, that's a really great way of saying it too. How do you design the spectator's experience? It's, uh, you have to, I've always said this, in order to be a good magician, uh, you need to be a good human. I don't mean like morally good. I mean like, it's really, really important to be able to understand why humans do certain things and why they act certain ways. And, and you know, you get into all that uh, neuro-linguistic programming and stuff like that, you know? It's important to just have a very good understanding, a whole understanding as much as possible of the human race as possible, you know? Um, and you can manipulate situations. You can manipulate the atmosphere. You can manipulate a certain using certain words in your in your in your speech. You can um, you can do certain kind of um, psychological anchoring, uh, getting them to get back to a thought or a feeling by touching them in different little things, man. Um, so just just be a good. Just learning about human beings makes you a better performer, a better person to to create and and perform magic for people. Um, yeah. So I, th I think that's the best way to describe that. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll tag on that just Please. for a sec. Um, the, the, one of the things I love about magic so much is that magic to me, I can't think of another art form that actually requires 
mm. you to empathize mm. with your audience. Mm. Um, you can yeah. be, you cannot empathize with your like empathy as in you need to know what they're thinking at all times. Mm -hmm. You could be a bad actor and not do that. You could be yeah. a bad dancer and not do that, but you would still be acting and you would still be dancing. That's if you true. don't empathize with your audience and you don't successfully deceive them, you are not performing magic. That's exactly right. Yeah, and I think so, it's also important I'm just like to, to mention that it, it's important to be like three steps ahead every time. It's just, mm -hmm. I mean, it's um, to be able to answer the questions before they're asked is a very important aspect and, sure. and just knowing so just by performing over and over again a trick you'll know how people respond to that certain moments when they ask certain questions right right and then it's your job to fill in those blanks with either moments of astonishment or through a story or through a prop handling or audience whatever it's, it's, it requires for that routine uh but yeah i agree with you on that completely and then it looks like dream upright will for 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 later on Thoughts on building a script and motivational moments in a routine. Something tells me we're going to get into that when he shares some of the card stuff or some of the magic stuff. Mm, mm. Fantastic. Uh, so but keep going can, with uh, questions. Let's yeah. Cool. I, and this is actually a really good uh, segue into it. Uh, <laughs> you were talking about NLP and different types of psychology. Uh, what are some resources that you would recommend to the people watching to learn about these psychological and human processes? Where, mm. where do you study these things yourself? It's a great question. Oh, let's see if I have it over here. Let's see. Get this. This is very old and it's very important. Mm -hmm. if, you want, if you want to understand how human beings think, this is an important booklet. It's called Instant Memory, the Automatic Memory System, Institute of the Advanced Thinking. Um, just it, 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 try to find it. It's again, this is very, very old. Um, Who wrote it? Let's see. Uh, I was looking for things. Where's the, um, oh, it's not written by a person. It was written by the Institute of Advanced Thinking. It was, it, was, it was wrote by specific scientists on one certain subject of memory and how human beings think and what they, how they use memory. Very fascinating. A lot of good information in here. Also, um, For any of that kind of stuff too, I, I would definitely, uh, you know, Faust, Faust and Hoy, man. Um, they had that great insight on psychology and how and humans think and how humans do certain things. Um, like the Hoy yeah, book what, test, Hoy, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Dr. Faust. Got yeah. it, yeah. Uh, those kind of people, you want to have a library of those kind of books and those kind of, uh, that kind of information. Um, let's see if it's over here. There's another one. Oh, this is really great. This is really great. So Mark is a dear, dear brother of mine, but Mark Salem, mm -hmm. um, just, just the man is just brilliant in the way he sees humanity and he's just right on. So this is a great book. It's called Mark Salem's mind reading, uh, covenant. Oh, and, it's by Mark Salem and Rich. Hold that up to the screen one more time. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Good. Yeah. So that's what I suggest. Fantastic. And the name of all of those books and the authors have been added to the chats in both Facebook as well as Very online. Cool. So if you want to read those later on, you know, we have the resources <laughs> right there. Uh, and so that's that's us up to Dream Upright's question, which uh, Ken said we would be starting to get into uh, as we learn some of your effects. Yeah, so sorry, just did you get Bob Romanoff here too? I just... Um... Yeah, his was more of a, uh, a statement as oh, opposed okay, to okay. a question. Great, great. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> we, we, we are caught up then. Guys, please, uh, if you have more questions as we go along, please just put them in the comments. Please, yeah, thanks guys. On the, on the, on the live. Uh, video we got some people watching that and put it or put them right in the chat here or I uh, primarily this would be the the best way to do it would be to put them right in the Q&A feature in the webinar all right so uh, Justin will you share with us uh, some examples of solving a problem using sort of a creative process or, or approaching a problem uh, during a, a trick yeah let's go with um Let's go with something that Mark Salem and I put together, actually. We, we put this out together. 
Um, I'm going to go backwards, though, and show you how we did everything backwards. I'm not going to show you the trick itself. I'm going to show you the trick afterwards, but I'm gonna, you already know, understand exactly how everything works. So, uh, Harris called the, calls these moments um, um, happy accidents, right? You've heard of happy accidents? It's these moments when and all of a sudden something just pops, something happens, and you're like, what in the world just happened? Yes. And you found a different purpose for an object that didn't, it wasn't meant for. Right. It's a very strange moment because it feels like you've just like, something's been torn back on time and space and like you've, you're shown like another form of life in this object. You're like, what is, what's, what? That's just crazy. So, um, I gotta find, there they are. We're still so I was in your other video now, so we got your other camera. Perfect, wonderful. Yeah. Oh, what are we doing here? What's it say? Camera two. Yeah, the host is spotlight is beautiful. Awesome. Okay. So let's get to this part. Um, so I was just messing around, just dicking around at 4 a.m. by myself, working on some Tic Tac stuff, and. I was the computer, I had the mouse over here, da, 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 and all of a sudden this happened. That didn't happen. That was incredibly weak. That is horrible. That did not happen. Let's try it again. So this happened, right? Oh. I was like, what the fuck is that? Because <laughs> I was doing this, and all of a sudden I heard a jump, and I looked back over, and I'm like, what the, did that fucking thing just jump? How did that thing just jump? And then because I couldn't see it jump, right? I just knew it jumped because I felt it. And then I was like, wait a second. Now I'm trying to put it back together. So I'm not like, I'm like an ape trying to go, oh, this happened. And then I was messing around with it and I was doing certain things to it. And I, I, I thought, was I doing this? Did I flick it with my, that wasn't my thumb. I didn't do this. And I realized what I had done. I had left a little bit of it open on that. Just, I didn't close it. And well, I was just messing around with something else and my, the pressure of my, my finger just naturally was relaxing. And as it relaxed, it pushed down. And I uh, go, no, I go, exactly. That's exactly what I did. I go, no way. What? What? <laughs> and so I went to the mirror. The first thing you do as a creator, right? You just go to the mirror and you're like, okay, I'm going to do this at least 10 times. If I don't get it at least nine, eight or nine times, you know, over and over again, there's something I got to work on, blah, blah, blah. And I just kept perfect 10 out of it. I'm like, what? Okay, this is crazy. And, and, I, and I put it out as the amazing mind reading mint. That's all it was, amazing mind reading mint. I put it out for $10 with some card routines with it, some ESP type stuff. And I put it onto my website. And I thought to myself, I, and I didn't check with anybody. Way. I just was like, I got to put this out. I have to put this out. Just the film, you know, whatever I need to film and get it done. And I, I got it done and I put it out and I said to myself, I know for a fucking fact, I'm going to get somebody who bought it. Who's going to say, you know, that's great and everything, but that's already somebody's. And this is the, and I'm like, I know it's going to happen because come on, come on, come on. There's no way that I came up with this. There's no way that I've discovered this. That's another thing. Do you discover something and do you create it? I think it's a combination of both. Um, like, right? And I'm just like, there's no way. So I, I put it out there and I said, okay, I'm just gonna go have some drinks and just go just relax and see what happens and maybe I'll get a couple sales or whatever. And Chad Long was one of the first people to buy it. And Chad messaged, didn't message me, he called me on the phone right when I was leaving out to the house and, and I saw his name, I'm like, fuck. Cause he <laughs> bought it, right? I saw the PayPal receipt come in. He bought it, and then literally within five minutes, he calls me. And I'm like, fuck, it's his, isn't it? Motherfucker. God damn it. It's so good. All right, I got to concede. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So he gets me on the phone. Just what's up, man? Oh, hold up, hold up. Let, yeah. let, let the video. There we go. You're back. You're back. So he gets yeah. you on the phone. Justin, what's yeah, gets up? Me on the, gets me on the phone. He said, just what's up, man? I said, hey, dude, what's up, brother? Haven't been talked to you for a while. He's like, so listen, I just bought the uh, Your Mind Reading Mint. I said, yeah, no, I... And thank you. So and I was just waiting for the fucking hammer to drop on me, right? Just, and he goes, dude, I got to tell you something. You've the things, man, but this is the best thing I've ever seen in my entire life of you creating. Uh and I go, what? He goes, yeah, I sent it to Weber. Weber loves it. And I go, what? 
Oh God. So, okay. So right away it was sent to God and God's like, yeah, I didn't create this before. Nobody I know created this before. Uh, and then well, me some ideas. Long gave me some ideas. Will got involved. Mark Salem got involved. And it became this really nice project called Reactic with a Weber, a Miller, Wilson, uh, Salem, and Long. And uh, just from this one little Tic Tac thing. And so from this one little Tic Tac thing, I'm going to show you a trick that, I, that me and Mark came up with that changes the concept, but it uses the same principle. So all this is, again, I'm going to go, go to this camera here. Oh, yep. Hold up. Yep. <clears throat> there you go. So all this is, and this is a bigger Tic Tac. This comes from a different uh, case, whatever. They got these weird cases now. I don't know. Normally, they'd be smaller. So this isn't closed all the way, right? So by pressing down on this and your thumb pressing at the same time, pressure is going to go into this and, uh, and energy is going to go into the box. So it's about science, really. And so that causes it to jump. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I fold every single, I, I just took it to convention. I just, I just did it one time. People were like, do that again, do it for guy. Fold <laughs> every single magician. Okay, where's the magnets? And, and this is around the same time that Tic Tac tricks were becoming like really fucking popular. Right. You know, magic goes through this weird fucking phase of like, let's just do all gum. Yeah, it's all gum. It's all sunglasses. It's all, uh, it's Tic Tac. It's, it's buttons. It's, it's all Patrick Pages. Let's see how many times we can change fucking bills. I mean, I was part of that. I mean, I get it. Yeah. Oh, hold up, hold up. We'll let it catch up here. I'll tell my favorite. Uh, yeah, there you go. You're, you, you, you yeah, are yeah. back. You are back. Good. So yeah, all that's happening here, you're pushing down. So in order for them not to see that, and, and, and really, they never see it anyways because they don't know what to look for. Right. But you can just put your finger there like you're doing a JW grip for a coin uh, magic mm -hmm. or something. And making sure that's just off to the side. And then you're just pushing down. And that makes a jump. So. All right. So we lost you. You just, you just said so it made a jump. Thanks, guys, for bearing with us in the technical difficulties here. But I'm going to tell uh, while your video catches up. Hey, everyone. Uh, here's my favorite stupid joke. You can steal it. All right. What is, I, the other day, I bought a thesaurus. I bought the world's worst thesaurus. It was terrible and terrible. All right. That's good though. I do like that. That's, That's pretty good. Joke. Come on. That's pretty good. Come on. Hey, what do you so, call it, Justin? What do you call it when Batman skips church? Christian Bale. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's a good one. I like that one. All right, you're back. You're back. So you push. That's good. Sorry about the internet, guys. It's bum fuck Ohio, man. I do apologize. It's all fuckery. I don't know. What are you gonna do? So we'll get through it though. Um, so yeah. So that this little thing turned into this crazy adventure, right? With all these people. Right. And without this little jumping tic tac, you know, we wouldn't have had this project. These ideas never would have came. But because of this one little fucking thing. And I sent it to, all, and then they saw it. They then started coming up with what they thought could be used in properties, right? In all these different ways. And Salem was like, well, if it wasn't a Tic Tac, what if it was like. Oh, that was the worst place to stop. We, <laughs> if it wasn't a Tic Tac, what if it was like, you're not caught up yet. Tell you what, uh, try, just... okay, try turning your, um, we have not lost that other video yet. So try turning your, uh, your mic on on the other video. Do you, have a, do you have an onboard mic on that camera? Is it just a phone or something? Oh, there you go. Of course, now you're back as soon as you're going over there. To, <laughs> to but it's, it's good pro process. Would this be a good time to talk about Magic Clicks as a whole as well, Kevin? Oh, yeah, sure, man. Sure, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll share my screen and just let people see what we got going on here. Because, um, you know, let me go to my Facebook page here. Uh, well, Justin gets that that microphone turned on. I'm going to go to Magic Flicks, and just so you guys know, we have, we have uh, an automatic. So if you go here, you'll notice <laughs> that it's just like Netflix for magic. We've got all of these amazing videos. All you do is click, and you find some ugly mug, and you just click on the video. Uh, Here's <laughs> my ugly mug. That's your ugly mug, and then it plays. And uh, yeah. the mugliest of uggs. The mugliest of uggs. So, but my favorite way to navigate the site is, you know, you've got all these categories that you have here that we, you know, obviously separated the videos into. But if you go over to the magicians tab here at the top, you can see all of our content creators. You go to the ugliest of mugs right here and look. So I put up the Maximum Entertainment audiobook. It's the whole thing with my sweet, sultry voice right in your ears. 
you haven't listened to it already, you really need to. And if you've, al- if you've already read it, go listen to it again. It's worth the free trial, right? But special attention down here to this particular, uh, to this uh, uh, account right here, Twin Cities Magic and Costume. They've given us the Greater Magic Video Library. So these focus, uh, these are focus sessions with all of the greats, really. You've got Tom Mullica here, for instance, Charlie Miller and Johnny Thompson together doing a single video, Billy Aww. McComb, Mike Rogers. I know it's insane. Um, so it's like 60, 70 DVDs that we have from them. We're getting more content every day. And also we got a very special dude right here with some really, really great what? content. I know that stage. guy. Yeah, that guy right there. So so join up, guys. You get 30, 30 days free. Uh, Will will put a link in the... Um, in the chat there and on Facebook. And uh, yeah, so if you type in, if you type in uh, uh, in the promo code, if you type in the word all stars, A-L-L-S-T-A-R-S, then you get 30 days for free. You automatically get seven days free, but go ahead and type in all stars and take the extra three weeks on us. All right, Justin, you are- Yeah, I'm back. All right, I said, I'm gonna use it, screw it. So um, I just turned everything off, yeah. Okay, well, we'll Um, see how it goes because we just had a little blip, so. Yeah, but you can see everything pretty easily. Yep, right we can there. see all of there. You Perfect. Can see it. So, um, so this little Tic Tac turned into like this really incredible creative project with these incredible people, right? That I never thought was going to be possible. So Salem um, said, this is where you were. Salem said, uh, said why, why should it be a Tic Tac? So Salem said, well, well, instead of a Tic Tac, what if we used like a billet or like a prediction or like a ball of paper? Ooh. I'm like, ooh, that'd be interesting. Will a ball of paper. So we started, so then it's from that little conversation, I was like, well, what else can fucking jump inside this thing? You know what I mean? Mm. So we figured it out that a ball of paper can jump inside a Tic Tac box. And uh-huh. it, yeah, so now this opens up uh, interesting possibilities, right? So we created this really neat little routine, a fun little routine. And I'll show you exactly what it is, but it uses the same principle. Now it's a little bit different with this one because you want it in the center you get a bigger jump in the center. Remember, it's a ball of paper, so you want it as dense as possible. We found the heavier the object, the farther it will go, mm. um, which is interesting, right? Well, it has yeah. less, it, it would be, it would It would more or less be the more dense the object because yeah. the, the Tic Tac box coming up against the bottom of it, if there's no springiness, then yeah. it will react more, right? It'll yeah, exactly. And so, so I had to start messing around with like, okay, what does it look like on this side? What does it look over here? Does it look better in the middle? So you start thinking this way. You start thinking, okay, how do you get the maximum possible jumping power of, of that of that paper ball? Right. And so from the center is usually where I do it from. As much as close to the center, uh, it just has a better jumping situation. It just sure. looks ridiculous, right? Yep. Um, so now you come out with this. And this is basically a, uh, a little test we're going to do with you, Ken. We're going to see if you're psychic, brother. Me? Yeah. Oh. I've, got some, I've got some items here. Uh, you know what these are. are. You know what these are, right? Yep. The Rhine Zinner cards, as they're called. And um, one of my favorite scenes this uses in a movie is Ghostbusters. When they're doing it to the girl and the guy... And the guy keeps getting it right, but since Bill Murray wants to fuck the girl, he keeps telling her that she's right and he's wrong. <laughs> and he keeps shocking him, right? It's the greatest thing in the world. Greatest thing in the world. So no shock here, no relationship, but I do want to see how psychic you are. I see if you're a psychic person. So I'm just going to mix Let's these up. Let's not rule anything out. Let's go, okay, for, fair enough. Let's get the cavassier. We'll figure it out together. Okay, no, I'm, I'm happy without the shocks. <laughs> So I'm going to lay them down. Do you honestly know where each sign is? Do you have any idea? No, of course not. Okay, perfect. So I know this sounds kind of weird, but uh, here, check this out. And if you were here, by the way, you would do everything. You would look at that ball of paper. I'd tell you not to open it, but it's a message for a little bit later. Close it up, place it off to the side. Um, Choose one of those objects. Choose one of those shapes, one of those designs. I choose the square. The square. Now, where do you think the square is? Really focus your attention and really think about where you think psychically you might think the square is. I, I think psychically that the square is uh, fourth p- 
position away from the camera. So one, two, three, four. Yes. Sir, God damn, you're pretty good, man. Well, you know, I have a history with this kind of thing. That's pretty amazing. Okay, choose <laughs> another one. Choose another one. Choose another All one. All right. I I'm excited. I, I choose the uh, the circle. Now, where do you now again using just psychic ability as much as possible? Where do you think? Don't laugh. Where do you think the psychic? Uh, the, the, yeah, where do you think the psychic is? Not I, here. Uh, where do you think the circle is? I'm clenching so hard. Um, yeah, yeah. I think the circle is now the second position away from the camera. So it's this one. Yes. Okay. Uh, ah. That's okay. That's okay. I mean, nobody's starting a cult right now, so you don't have to worry. It's all right. Okay. Um, we have three left. We have well, squiggly lines. We have a circle, and we have this the uh, star. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with the star. Okay. Uh, and the star is the. Uh, the the first position toward the this camera. one right here closest one to me yep oh this one or this one I'm sorry uh, closest one to me yeah this one yep that's the one yep okay all right well listen. I'm really bad at this well you're not good okay so, so here maybe if I mix them up that'll change <laughs> can you let me cheat like I normally do and then I'll be better how would you cheat just look at them first <laughs> well I don't know yeah. Like people ask like, hey, are you a mind reader? I'm like, only if you write it down and let me look at it while you're- That's different. right, that's right. <laughs> and uh, then I can tell you whatever the fuck you want me to tell yeah, you. Exactly. So uh, we, got a, yeah, we, got a, we got a star to save our lives and we have a circle to save our lives. So listen, you got one. Now, honestly, if you were doing this test in one of those research facilities, they're not gonna think, you know, like, okay, everybody gets one at least, you know, whatever. But you still have two chances. And right, if you right, think right. about it, just by default, you kind of win both. Well, this is the most likely one for me to get right, unless you want to do it again after this, or there's only one face down, which no, I'm this is, this is, about. This is it. Okay, okay. So, um, so in this case, I'm going to say that the star is farthest away from the camera. This one here. That one. Yeah, see, okay. The, uh, so so we won't, with the last one face down too. Right, okay, with that one. Let, <laughs> let, star, me, mix right let me mix it up, let me mix it up, let me mix it up. Where's the star? At? That's the star right there. That's It'd be the great if it's just a purple dinosaur now or some fucking shit. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> so, so, as, so as we, that would be really cool, right? So as we can tell, can you might not want to go out, you know, lotteries and stuff right away, you, you know, no yeah. keno. Yeah, 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 no, I get it. I, um, but I do think you're, it's, it's possible for you to help with, with this little experiment. So, cause you did get at least one, right? So that's kind of interesting. Mm. Um, I'm going to mix these up again. Again, I don't want you to know where they are and I'm, I'm sure you don't, but okay. just for our, our, the sake of our people there. I have no other cameras in your house. Perfect. Yeah. Except for the four that we know of. That's okay. right. So now I know this sounds kind of weird, but now I want you to focus all of your energy on this little ball of paper. And I want you to name one of those shapes, any shape you want right now, stick with it. This is the one we're gonna use. Circle. Okay, circle. It's almost like using it like a divining rod. And really focus on the circle. Are you concentrating? I am so concentrating right now. Perfect. Really concentrate. Oh shit, what the fuck was that? Wait a sec, wait, wait, did you see that? Did you see that? Something happened right there. Something happened right there. I'm gonna move these away. Put them away. This was not a force, right? You just chose circle, this was I what just you chose. chose circle and this was the place where it did the thing. Yeah. But I told you, I told you I had a message for you as well. See, I had a feeling you were more psychic than you thought, and I'm glad I stayed with you. You you would be here right now, by the way. You would open this up. You would drop this out. You would then open this up yourself. It's one of the reasons I love this, because you don't do anything. And then, of course... I swear to God, Justin Miller. On this little piece of paper, we got ourselves stuck, but that's fine. I can see it. I can see it and I'm mad. Oh, you're gonna see more. 
You're going to see what <laughs> Take it all. Take it all. Take it all. <laughs> there you go, man. Glorious. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah that, so that's mine in uh, Mars Salem. So let me, let, me, let me show you what goes into this. So I'm glad you said circle because I didn't have to do a switch. So that was perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, right, right. Right. So there's an index. So we have five of these, right? Now, in the beginning, I, I, I told Mark, I said, well, we need, I want it to be self-contained completely. So what I did is I put a piece of double stick tape back here and I, and I take just each ball of paper and put it right there, right? Mm, okay. The problem with that is, of course, you, can't, you really can't lay it down because then people, they could see around, they could see these balls of paper, right? And, and right. it's really a showpiece, more like a parlor type thing. Or, or maybe like a, a trade show type thing, right? Mm -hmm. You're not doing a walk around with this, put it on a table, right? That kind of stuff. Sure. And I didn't like that. I mean, I, I liked the method for a while, but I, you know, just, I needed to upgrade it somehow. So, so it's like, okay, I got to get rid of that whole idea. So now what I do is, so I set this up. So this is all set up. Now what it is on the back of this, we have our uh, balls of paper. Oh, nice. Okay. That's two, three, four, and five. So there's my cross. There's my wavy lines. Right. There's my square, and there's my star. So I come out with this now. Take everything. Now, if you would have said a different one, so let's say, thank you for saying circle, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It just was awesome. <laughs> so let's say you were to say square. That's not a square in there, obviously. Right, right. So if that's not a square, I'm going to take... All the rest of these, I open this up, place this away. As I go to put this into my close-up case or as I go to put this into my pocket or whatever, I just steal away square at the same time. And it's it's in that order, right? Top left. Yep. Two, three, four, four, and five. Yeah, two, yep. three, four, five. Yep. Two, three, four, and five. In case, but by the way, in case people don't know, um, when you do using ESP symbols, right? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, and five reference the circle, the plus. That's exactly right. That's the a good point. Lines. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. So good. one is circle. Two because two lines. Five because five points. Three wavy lines there. Three wavy lines. And, and four, then four, 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 four. Yeah. Yep. And these are also marked too. Right. Of course. Yeah. 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 So these are marked. So you, like so it's it's just one of those effects that just came together so perfectly for us. Right. Because. Right. It, there's just no, it's, it just destroys people. Absolutely destroys people. So They've now, stolen. yeah. So now if I'm in this position and I've stolen everything, I'm putting everything away and I like being here, right? I'm just, I'm just finger palming this. I love being here. Now, as I say, you know what, this is crazy. And I'm, I take this away, turn it over, check it out. What did you say? Square, turn it over. As they're turning it over, I open up this openly like this, right? Mm, just nice. open it up. And then uh, as they're turning it over, I dump this out. It's stuck to my hand. Don't let that happen, by the way. Don't That's another important part. Push so the, the glue part is together so it doesn't stick to your fucking hands. Right, right. Um, because then it just looks stupid. So as they're turning this over, I'm just doing this. What a wonderful switch that is. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. So this it's is- like they were is, designed for magic. Yes, exactly. So this is, this is big enough that it won't come out the top. And I make sure of that, right? So now um, when I can just open that up and I can dump it in someone's hand, I can do whatever I want. It's just so, it's, it's so perfect. It's hidden, it hides everything, that's a little sticker. The perfect shuttle pass device. The per that's, that's exactly right, that's exactly right. I mean, look at that, that's crazy. That's awesome. So, so now, or, or if I'm doing like a table type thing, I'll keep this finger palmed and I'll open this up as I dump that out close this up and put this away, I can either do a false transfer and drop this into my savant or my lap, mm. or as they're picking that up, I can reach over and grab this off the table, put it into the savant as I throw that off at the same time. For them, right, right. Exactly, and there's, now there's this great moment. I haven't touched anything, and it just feels like, you know what I mean? Um, this kills them, but when this happens, oh. Oh, there's no, where do you go from here? Because there's nothing left. There's no, that's another aspect of this that we figured out. The more props that were left on the table, the more outs people think that could happen. That looks fucking weird. Doesn't that look like that's inside there? Yeah, that's cool. Happy accidents, right? These are happy the kind accidents. of things. It looks like it's floating. 
Run. Oh, if it goes that way, it looks like it's just inside. Oh, that's so cool. I think, I think you got a Zoom show thing to work on. Imagine some invisible thread on your pad to move, to move it inside the box. Dude, that's a great idea, right? Yeah. So right there, it starts levitating and it starts moving. Yes. What? And you just reach over and pluck it out or something. That's well, what if you, what if you, um, what if you pick? You guys are seeing, you're, you guys are seeing glorious torture happen right now, by the yeah, way. What if, what, if you pick, what if you move the box around it? Will that look weird? Oh, dude, it's like that a Jerry. That looks pretty good. What the fuck, dude? It looks like a Jerry Andrews type thing. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's cool. What? Okay, there you go, something that's there. something to play with right there. Get, get yeah, on there's, that, there's nine hours of my fucking life. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, because I, I just saw you grab the uh, the ball and the front of the Tic Tac and you can slide it forward and backward that way and have it look like it's still inside. Isn't that That's crazy? Cool. Yeah, yeah. What if you what if what if the um what if you just contacted the ball with your finger to push everything forward simultaneously or whatever? Like that? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, that's it. Right? Yep, that's what I was saying right so there. And good. you can pull it back too so it looks like it's inside. Oh, that's so good. Hey, actually you can make it you can make it disappear too. No, that's yeah, dude. Man. Yo, right? do that again. Do that again. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. There you go. Right there. That's so good. That's so good. Oh, <laughs> and they that's, tie it behind your thumb. that's crazy. Or you just shake it and it appears or something. Yo, that was just behind your thumb. That's cool. Yeah. So have it like like one of the coin moves, right? So it's behind yep. your thumb type of thing. Yep. 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 Oh. Yeah, so that's... check this out. If it's levitating, I think I, I, you got a way. Like, you get some black cloth or whatever, or some invisible thread to attach it to the bottom of the tic tac box, so that when you move the tic tac box forward, it stays at that. All I need, yeah, and all I need to do actually, I can I can keep it here, right? And if I have this yeah. attached to thread, just by moving back, it'll look like it levitates inside because it's moving back uh, on the um the the um, close up. Pad. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That right, right. I was thinking if you grab the box and move the box forward. It'll, it, it's, uh, you have to right now use your thumb to push the thing forward with it. But if yeah. it was attached to the box. I see what you're saying, like double, like with a little tape or something. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Actually, even, it, even its own little uh, spittle or whatever it's called. There we go. Oh, that could work. Stick with the pass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, now it just kind of looks like it's stuck to the inside of the box. Yeah, now it looks like what it actually really fucking is. That I had in there <laughs> was sitting there was really cool. That's, so just little moments like this, right? Just yeah, there it is, guys, oh. right there. Uh, literally what we were talking about during this entire lecture having a team working on it together just exactly with the thing and figuring it out and basing it off of material that you've already looked at and played with and having rotate people it now push it put push it forward and now rotate the box push the box forward a little bit like what yeah push the box forward a little bit and now that it's in the center of the box keep it in the center of the box as you rotate the box up like hold on to it, push it in. Yeah, no, keep, just just rotate the box up, but keep it in the center like that. You see that? Oh, it looks like oh, that's crazy, dude. Right, it's uh, the isolation. That's so fucking weird. That's it's like, funny. A, it's like a Copperfield moment. It's like a, the the um, where he's wa she's walking over him when he's flying in the box. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's that looks crazy, dude. Yeah, that's a start. But that's kind of cool. That looks like it. Oh, it looks like it's going through almost. Oh, you know what? You 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 know what you know what the trick is here probably, or there's a version of this where you openly put it behind, and you say this is the zoom version where you openly put it behind and you say, look, if I place the box in front, it looks like it's inside, and then a moment later you pick it up and it is inside. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Right. So you could you could go like this. Right. Yep. Yep. It, it looks, looks like, like it's inside, inside the box. And then come here and shake it and let the other one fall. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. And then it's inside. Oh, yeah. that's so good. Oh, oh God. All right. Well, I expect that on, on uh, Glorious Torture. Volume. Pretty fucking cool, man. <laughs> Little things like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, we got people at home like clamoring to their junk drawers to find an old Tic Tac box. Right? <laughs> so as you can see, I mean, just from that effect, from this one Tic Tac, it just turned into this glorious, beautiful routine. Um, and from showing you guys of this, uh, we turned this into another crazy thing that you can do with this. So, you know, it, don't be afraid to to play, play, play with everything. Play with it. With the hive mind, right? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I got bubbles. I got, I got, I got so many little things that just things I have things and I'll just, <laughs> and that's another thing. And Adam talks about this a lot. I really respect Adam's uh, 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 professional um, uh, views on this because he's 100% right. I mean, he wrote a book about creativity. He, he better be, um, but um, leave them out, leave everything out. Don't put things away. Mm. never know when you were just walking by and going, huh, I never thought about that. Let's try that. Let's see if it, and also another thing I think it's important, have a set area, really get a set area somewhere in your house or somewhere in your apartment. Look, I don't have a big place at all. This is a really small fucking place, but I've turned my room into my studio. You know what I mean? Right. right. Um, so you can do it. Um, and, and, and have a, have a, it's, you know, it's a safe place. This, this is a great area where I film and I create and I mess around with things. Um, you don't want constrictive space. You want an open space. You want to, and that's an important aspect of creativity too. You just want openness as much openness as possible. Mm. Um, and this trick, it kind of proves it, you know, how do you, you know, we took this one little Tic Tac and because of Mark's idea with a billet or, or, or a pellet or whatever, a prediction, and then we turned this into this routine. Um, and it never would have happened without this little fucking thing jumping. It's crazy. Oh, man, beautiful. Yeah. Well, hey, do we have any, uh, let's get some more questions. Any more questions, we're yeah. About an hour and a half in now. We'll probably wrap up in a little bit and save anything that we have left for volume. I hope people are having a fun time. Are you guys having fun? I would really like to hear if you're having fun. Yeah, I think I think we are. We got some love in the, on the Facebook group. We've, uh, cool. uh, we've got uh, some, some chat generating through here. Sparks, mm -hmm. sparks make fire. That's right. Dream upright. Sparks make fire. Um, yeah. I have a, uh, so, so there's a question here from Dream Upright, actually, which I think we, um, well, actually, we, we, it seems like we didn't really cover this too much, but maybe you can talk about this for a little bit. He wants to know your thoughts on building a script and thoughts no. on motivating Next. moments. I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's up, Daniel? I, I love, I love. <laughs> no, nah, fuck that. Next. Um, Justin Miller. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, no, I love Daniel. What's up, brother? Uh, he's a great guy. Um, really, really creative guy too. Uh, the guy asking this question. Um, you know, me and Wilson talks. About, we talk about this a lot. Um, he likes to have a track to go on. He wants that track and 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 be able to have a certain kind of storyline to go down and and then he'll, he'll he'll sway off the track many times right but he likes that safety of the of the first part i you know i can do either way um i i, I personally my my issue with scripting magic all like everything is that you lose improv moments that you just don't see because you're so focused on the script and you're so focused on what you should be doing and what the script says and how the movements are going and the choreographing and all that stuff that some spectator might say a funny line and it could be used mm. they, or, the, or they'll respond a certain way and you don't, you don't connect to that response. It just feels like this person's very out of touch with what they're doing. Uh, I've seen a lot, ha I've seen that happen a lot, but I mean, the scripting magic for like one man shows and stuff like that, I think that's really important. I mean, that's, you're seeing a show, you're going to see a show. I don't want to just see a show that's not, you know, some kind of a structure. Right. There's gotta be some kind of a structure. Um, but I think it takes a certain kind of person to be able to do better, routine scripting, but at the same time, giving room for improv Giving, giving room for those beautiful moments that could happen that you could just kind of riff off. Well, that's what uh, you were discussing just a second ago about Greg Wilson. He's, he's putting together, um, you know, he's putting uh, work into a script, but because he, has the, because he has the track and because he's memorized the script, he has the freedom to leave the script. That's exactly right. That's whoever. exactly right. And that's, that's a, that's, it takes a professional to be able to do that. That's not, that's just a, sure. that's sure. not an easy thing to do because you and I both know audiences are not the most predictable thing about audiences is that they're not predictable. I mean, they're just, sure. yeah. Sure, yeah. 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 It, would be, it, sound, it sounds like when you say that, you know, you lose moments for improv because you're so focused on your script, just to give a little bit of pushback there. It sounds more like somebody who has a script, but has not memorized it or has not. Yeah. It. Yeah. But that, but the, most people do that. Like they, they, they'll just like either, take what they heard off of a download like I've done or, or somebody's done and then they'll just go 
word for word. Like I, I just don't want people to do that. Cause I, I don't go word for word. So you don't go off my word. Like, I'm not, <laughs> you know, oh, right, unless right, it's, right, unless right. it's a trick that's created around the story. Like my latest trick, uh, raising mercury, raising mercury came out of this really strange place. I thought, would it, what would it be like if Houdini had a pet when he was a kid, but he wasn't allowed to have an actual animal, what would he use for a pet? Well, he uses imagination. He probably uses one of his props. So I created this whole concept of this, this silver billiard ball and it's inside this little house and it moves around on the table. And then it's his name's Mercury, obviously. And Mercury does tricks. It goes inside out of the house and it does all these crazy things without you touching it or anything. Um, and then the, you do the last thing, say a play dead, and then you slam it down. And now it's just this big puddle of metal disc. It's flat now, right? You're like, you know, awesome. it, right? And then you pick it up. You say, would you like to see its true form? And then you melt this, you mold this, this disc into this little dog figurine. Mm. And his name is Mercury. Is and this I told, what you were telling me about before? Uh, I don't know if I told you. Did I tell you about this? You mentioned this trick before, but you mentioned that you sort of have a, have a have a magnum opus your your uh, no that's not my that's not the, that's not the black stone moment that's not the light bulb moment but um it's very unique and it's never been done before and i use props that had never been considered to put into you know what i mean yeah, very, um, cool. very cool concept. and i only sold 10 of those it, it was a, it was a real exclusive thing because i don't want more than 10 people performing it i just don't sure. um there's certain things in the market that you're like okay saturate it saturate it that's fine but there's other things i'm just like no, i just i it's too unique to have everybody doing it Right, yeah. of course, of course. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so, but but oh, there's scripting in that. I think that's to the point. Yeah, there's yeah. Scripting yeah. in that. I I use the idea of the storyline of Houdini having a pet to turn it into this grandiose, and they believe it. They believe this is Houdini's pet because now why wouldn't they? It does magical things. Why wouldn't they believe that? Right. You know? Yeah. Well, it's like if you if you have a if you have multiple moments of interaction where you don't know what the other person's going to say, then of course that makes designing a script around what you're going to, what you're going to say very difficult. Sure. Right? So if you're sure. doing your kind of magic or Wilson's kind of magic, when you're, when you're sort of out there, you know, in the trenches, yeah. and you're dealing with people and you're having them hold things and you're asking them open-ended questions and whatever. Yeah. Then structure is more, maybe more important than the specific words. Although you guys have been doing this long enough that moments of improvisation, much like a freestyle rapper, are just things that have happened thousands of times. In exactly. Our they and they just and it's funny because they come off as scripted now, as scripted. But they're not, and that's an interesting thing too because sometimes something that's not scripted could turn into something that's scripted because it's a great line, it's a great bit, it's a great whatever, and right. now it becomes part of a great example of this is Copperfield walking down the steps of a theater when he's. Um, when, back in the day when he was doing um, Misled, right? So yeah. he was doing Misled, he was doing uh, Crazy Man Handcuffs and all that stuff. And misled being the, the pencil through Bill. Timothy Wink, yeah, yep. beautiful, right? Beautiful yep. effect. Um, and, uh, and so there was, there was something that happened one, one show, which was an accident. He tripped down the stairs and he, and he came up with the line. And the line was, he can make the Statue of Liberty disappear, but he can't walk down the flight of stairs. He put that in every show. Now he's tripping on purpose. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. And and performers, and I don't, I don't mean to burst anybody's bubbles. I don't know if you guys know this, but that performers do that a lot in <laughs> stage shows. And oh, once yeah. you find, once you find that little little bit, that little thing that just adds a nice little moment to that, you know, and he gets a great laugh out of it. It was a beautiful thing. It's your job yeah. to orchestrate the experience. You know, if you're not doing, I mean, if you can make it look like there's a bunch of improv, but it's not. Yeah. I mean, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I, think, I think it's important to study improv. That, that's one of the things I love studying. I just yeah. I love I mean, that's, improv. That's where those inspired lines come from in general, right? You don't yes. stand for that line. You don't yes. say, oh, now it's going to be a great idea for me to trip down the stairs. That's right. That's right. Hey, what if I trip? Yeah, you don't, you don't think that way at all. Now, and I would suggest uh, looking at Second City and Groundlings and those kind of places. Yeah. Of um, and just, you know, Amy Poehler is one of the greatest improv people. Like, she's just really funny, just naturally. And mm -hmm. she was part of Groundlings and a lot of other people, a lot of people from like Reno 911, that whole thing was mostly improv anyways. Um, and I love shows like that, like Veep and those kind of things. Very improv, Larry Davidson show, all improv shit. Just it, like, 
except for Veep. Veep, they did, it was improv, but they took the improv lines and then they turned that into the script. Right, right, right. So they right. took the best line, right, of each reading, um, right. which is a really interesting way of doing it, right? I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of fascinating. Uh, so yeah, study those kind of shows and study those kind of places. I mean, so, if you really, yeah. Yeah, so the second half of that question is thoughts on motivational moments and routines. I don't mm -hmm. think he means inspirational. I think mm -hmm. he means like, in the thing we were just doing, for instance, you had to move the Tic Tac box off to the side in order to make the Tic Tac vanish. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. And maybe you can do a different technique and, and move it forward or whatever and sh or shake it or something. But if you have to do a moment uh, something like that, some kind of action, you know, how do you go about thinking about the motivation behind the action? Because there is that line that you sometimes cross where yeah. it seems like you're doing that for a reason, for, for a deceptive reason, not for a magical reason. Yeah, that's a really good point. This, I think this is a good example of that. So this, this, this is a slot box, right? And people don't know what a slot box is. It's an Aikido box that they turn into a box that can hold a coin, right? It's a, it's a great little box. A regular Aikido box, it, it wouldn't have a slot uh, situation. And that means that when you turn it over, that coin won't fall out. So there's a lot of great routines you can do with this, but th this is a motivation moment. So I got to get this coin out of the box. I got to get them in with these coins, but I got to separate another coin to get this coin into my hand at the same time, right? How the hell do I do that? So by picking these coins up, the Chinese coins first, and then I pick up the silver coins, I can now show the coins. Now, the way you tip this out, you don't like dump it out or anything. You just lift it up like this and it drops out, mm. right? So just a little bit, just a little bit of a whatever will drop right out. Interesting. So I've shown the coins, I talk about the coins, but now that's the first characters, right? These are the first characters in the play. Now I want to throw the coins onto the table and show the box now while still holding a coin in my hand. Right. So in order to do that, the motivation has to be, and in my head, I'm saying this, I'm actually saying this. Here's the play, here's the, here's the characters. I'm showing the characters, I'm showing who they are, these, these people here, you get to know them, but I wanna show the box too, but I gotta get this coin out, right? So I do a Benzai's friction pass, right? Keeping this one coin behind, and if I combine it at the exact same time of coming over here and dropping this, this will melt into that. And it looks like I've just thrown the coins and then showed the box. And just by doing that one little move, you've now had the motivation to show here, those go here and now everything can be examined type thing. Perfect. And it looks like you've done nothing except throw the coins over. And I also have to throw the coins over to be able to pick up the box, right? Yeah. So, all that motivation is happening. And so I guess it's kind of interesting. I'm kind of scripting as I'm going. I just kind of realized that. It's kind of pointed that out. I'm kind of scripting as I'm going, but I'm scripting in my head the next, it's like a chess player. I'm scripting the next three or four moments in my head of how it's going to happen. You're scripting, it looks like you're scripting um, uh, an internal monologue based yes. on necessity. Yes, that's a very it's good point, yes. Structural it's a structural yes. script more than a more than a, a, a verbal script. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the verbal part comes in when I'm just kind of lackadaisical, just talking, right? So as I'm saying, like this is kind of interesting. Got some coins here. Got uh, two Chinese coins, two silver coins. Kind of cool. I got a box here too. Here, check this out. I got a box. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm I'm saying to myself the things I'm saying to them because I'm 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 pinpointing the moments I want them to. And you'll notice this, I separate them pretty heavily away from each other, right? Yeah, they're that's, not, a nice, that's a nice touch, theatrical touch, just. I, I think that's important. It's, it's like with a Tic Tac, everything at the end is just that little ball of paper and that one card, the box isn't even in there. So now they don't have to worry about if I'm doing anything funny, I just leave those there. Pretty crazy, right? It's crazy. And then I go into like a transposition type routine. Right. Um, so the rest of the routine is I, I don't want to move this hand yet. If I move this hand because I have something in it, I could, it looks, it might look different. So I'm just going to, excuse me, I'm just going to kind of be lackadaisical with that hand. I say, look, we'll try something here. Here, would you put the lid back on top? They put the lid back on top. As they're putting the lid back on top, as they, I give them something to do, I'm going to throw one coin, then do a bobo switch for the second one. Got it. Come over, shake, show the first coin is, is uh, they've done their little thing, right? 
because of the slot box, I'm gonna open up my hand and the motivation is to show those coins. So I'm really just dropping that one coin and it's collecting with the other coin. It's a perfect motivation for what I'm doing. I say, I know you didn't really get to see that. And notice what I'm doing again, look where everything is. They're very separated from each other. Then I go for the second one. Now for this one, it's different. I, I give a little uh, different view of this. So I say, look, you didn't get to see it really happen. So now I have this coin here. I've got to get it on the table. So the, and I don't want to drop it like this. So the way I do it is I come forward and then I push these coins back as I slide that one back at the same time. So I'm, the motivation of dragging the coins also gives me a reason to do this at the exact same time. And now I can do a really visual change. So now I can come up here, close everything up, and I come back and just bring the, this one coin back, and now it looks like the other coin has changed. Wow. Now, now those two coins, now by coming forward, this is behind, I can now show my hands pretty clean. I now put these coins up here. I bring it to this hand. I open. And now, now here's my situation. I got to get this over here. So I just bring this back and dump at the same time. That was a bad one. But I wanted to make sound. And dump at the same time. Mm. And it's just connecting to this one. Why do I do it that way? Why don't I just do it the exact same way I did before? Here's why. Because if I condition them to do for this moment, right? Remember this moment here where Yep. I'll get to this point. So the boom, 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 right? And there's that one move, right? So if I'm sneaky again like that, it looks it looks kind of bad. It looks like I'm doing something. So instead of so instead of being sneaky like that. Now I got this great reason to kind of close this up and everything. This changes. They're like, what the hell? This comes here. I slowly open this up, drop these out. And now it looks like I've dropped them on the table. So there's no funny business there. I couldn't have done yeah. anything. Paradoxically, right? the requirement for you not to do it as a shuttle pass uh, has, has led into something that looks more fair. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And now look at the situation. I'm in a great situation right now. I still got a coin over here. Notice it hasn't fallen yet. There's a yep. reason. I don't, I don't, yeah, it's, 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 it's really technical. It's really strange stuff. So what I usually do at this point, so in the beginning of the routine, this is all like this, right? This is all, I love coin box stuff. I just love it. Um, this is an empty coin box, same slip box. It's upside down. This goes here. Uh, I just bring this out like that. I don't have to do any of those weird things. And I leave this here away from the audience. I do the routine. I get to this position where we just were. This is here now. Now I'm gonna come near the table and I'm gonna drop that coin in my lap or my savant as I come forward and I place the lid and box near my lap, right to the edge of the table, okay? Yeah. I pick these up. I said, we'll do this one more time. And it's going to look like I placed the coins inside, but I keep them here. Right? N simple little thing to do. I notice I'm not trying to do, I think people just get stupid sometimes. I'm not trying to do one of these things or like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you just can tell something's happening when you hold coins like this. Who the fuck holds coins like this? They just don't. <laughs> so Magi by pick, was that? Magicians. The magicians, that's exactly right. People who don't fire wallets. People who are up um, to something. That's, that's, I am. <laughs> so notice also I have this open, right? So the mouth is open a little bit bigger. So it covers everything too. So as I come in, all I'm doing is this. I'm just dropping it. It's making its own sound. But because I'm coming in quick, it looks like I've just placed them inside. Now what's great is as I'm talking, I can shake these. Oh, no. <laughs> I can now place this here. I've got the coins here, and just by waving, I've now got a killer fucking transposition, and now the box ends up in the fucking purse at the end. Woo! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, let's see uh, some love for that, guys. Jeez. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very, I'm very proud of that routine. Yeah, that very was proud. lovely. Thanks, man. Thank you. Um, so, so you see where the motivation comes in. Every single thing I have to do next has to make sense for the last move or the last moment that they, they, they remember. Also in the beginning, I was using three and three. I'm like, that it just, it, it, they couldn't follow it. So I took away an, an extra coin. So now I just use two silver coins and two Chinese coins. Mm. All right. Well, that, no, that's, that's glorious. Thanks man. 
I think I think my actually my I'm not sure if my video was spotlighted at the time because I was reacting. Uh, but I'm gonna spotlight your video there. And can you just do that move one more time? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Did you guys like that? <laughs> just the last bit. Just the last. Oh yeah. Yeah. The Thanks, guys. Thank you so and then, much. And then after that, we're gonna bring in. Uh, we have somebody who actually raised their hand. They want to do a live question. So this is cool. the first time we've done this successfully. I have no idea how to pronounce that name. I apologize. Uh, Chandrashikar Subramanian. Are you creating a spell? What is happening? Uh, I am. Uh, <laughs> yes. I. <laughs> You know, words are magic. You ever notice? Words are magic. That's right. Words are magic. It's because you spell words. Okay. Oh, that's, so some, that's some Kenton stuff right there. Here's uh, the. So here's the moment. All right, here's the moment. Oh, I forgot the closure. That's actually better. I fucked it up. Never mind. So it's here to here. Oh. I'm looking too close to the screen. Now, also, never look at the screen when you're performing. It's the worst. Yeah. Thing. Right. So you would think it's the easiest way to do it, but it's not at all. all right, let's try that again. All right, so here we are. Here we go. Fucked it up, but that's all right. I, I did that's all right. We get it. We get it. It goes. No, it, well, it worked good the first time. Which okay, I'm do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Well, here's the thing. I usually here's the problem. This is what's, what the problem is. I'm I'm doing everything. I have like a slice of things right now. Yeah. Usually I would do it this way, right? Right. Yep. And so yep. that's the only that's that's the reason everything's happening right now. So I apologize about that. It's all right. Let's try it one more time. Right. Yep. Just another bit of little bit of Viagra. We'll be good. <laughs> there we go. Boom. And then. Glorious. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. I love that. I love that. So so the little bit yeah. that you walked everyone through is. Look at all the moments in this routine. I mean, regardless of whether they uh, rewind or watch this on YouTube or Facebook or whatever again and try to learn the routine, regardless of all of that, every single moment- I'm gonna be putting this out. I'm gonna be putting this out with another project, but go ahead, yes. Oh, are you? Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, every single motion is justified. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. You, that's not, right. not a moment where you go, that's kind of weird. Yeah, and that's a really interesting point because in the beginning, when I was working on this routine, this was the biggest part for me. I because I was I had everything else down. I was really happy with it, but mm -hmm. this was the biggest thing for me. And I was like, man, how do I? Okay, so I've just gone here, and I realized at that moment, oh shit, I'm in this position. I just moved back, just moved back, and then whoa. because what I was doing in the beginning is I was doing this. So this would be here and this would be over on this side. I'd shake, come here and then come here. Mm. And then as I pick this up and drop them again, but then I realize, well, there's what the fuck am I doing? They already see them. Why am I picking these up again? And I realize why I'm picking them up because I got to drop this into here and it's going to make noise. So I've got to drop that to cover it. I'm like, well, that doesn't make any fucking sense. There's no motivation there. Mm. So then that's when I came up with this and I was like, oh, dude, this is so much better because after you've done everything over here, shake, you're in, you got a great little position here and you just come back and boom. And it just happens. Looks great. Thanks, man. Yeah. So it went through, it went through a lot of different, uh, you know, trial and error, glorious torture. Fuck. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to bring in, uh, I, we're going to allow you to talk, uh, Chandra Shikar. You're, you're going to correct me on that, please, please. Oh, doesn't that mean uh, a, a puppy of love? What I don't know what that fuck that means. What, <laughs> is, what is it? Chan, Chandra, Ch, Chandra Shika? Chandra Shika? Chandra, Chandra, I'm going to, just going to butcher the fuck out of this. I apologize, brother. Your, yes, your yes. name's going to be Stam. <laughs> hey, you're muted right now. If you're going to, if you're going to ask a question, you are currently muted. So we do want to bring you in here. Uh, for your question, but I'm asking you to unmute. And at some point, maybe you will, but we have another question we can address and then we're gonna finish up here. Cool. So, yeah, so he's, you're, you're welcome to uh, talk or anybody else, if you have any more questions, we are finishing up here in the next couple of minutes, but um, uh, this is a to be continued, definitely, because there's so much more to talk about. Uh, will, do we have any others? <clears throat> yeah, so the one final question that we had as well, which is the, what is the best way to make sure sure that your effect is original and how do you properly credit and know what is safe to film versus perform live mm, mm, mm. Well, that's a really good question who who, who asked that question uh that was dream again 
A great question, Daniel. Absolutely. Um, in or this for crediting and for knowing if something's original or 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 at least if your take on it is original, um, that's where that team comes in. That's where that team comes in. You need to be able to film something, send it off to them at five in the morning or four in the morning, whatever we do, and go, hey, take a look at this and then tell me what you think. Um, always, like I, like I said, just surround yourself with smarter people than you in whatever field you're in. I think that's really important. So I have a very vast knowledge of magic. Gregory Wilson has a vast knowledge of magic. Weber is the knowledge of magic. I mean, you know what I mean? Paul Harris is the knowledge of magic. So uh, we have Bibles that we go to, you know, with, with Harris and with, and with, uh, with, with uh, Weber. Um, so that's important to just uh, uh, surround yourself with those kind of people that know the history of magic. Um, I'm one of those people that I've read. I've just, I've just engulfed myself in magic ever since I was five years old. So I've read almost just so many, so many books and so many lecture notes and whatever. And there'll be a time where someone come to me and go, I think I can't, I was like, actually, you know, that was in Paul Bearer's review or that was in the Kabbalah or that was in blah, 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 whatever. Um, so it's important to have those kind of people because it does, it's a daunting task to uh, see what's original, what's not original. There's also the Conjuring Archives. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was just going to say that as well, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I use Conjuring Archives all the time, man, all the time. If I'm not sure about something, Conjuring Archives, man. They've done a really great job at, um, at cataloging moves and, and routines and crediting and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of magic that's just very, uh, like we were talking about earlier, you know, we kind of live in the Wild West with this magic thing lately. Like, like for the instance, like, why can anybody just reproduce the devil's silk? That's crazy to me. Anybody can do it. Nobody says a word. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then you try to figure out who created it first and who goes back. And it's like, that's one of those things that's very obscure. And that we just don't have a lot of information of where it first, you know what I mean? Like how it really came to be and all this stuff. Um, so Car Conjuring Archives for sure never failed me uh you definitely also want that that band of uh, people around you that you trust as well what was the second part of that question uh and how do you know when it is safe to perform something live versus video recording it mm, that's a great question right so it's like like you if a baby born you wouldn't just put it out in the middle of the woods immediately and say okay fend for yourself right like mm -hmm. it needs to be nurtured it needs to be it needs to be have time to uh, grow up and, and progress and, and become a, a live thing. And so the magic is the exact same way, creating something and products are not products in general, but like just ideas in general are like that. So um, you test drive it, man. You just test drive the shit out of it. Every single chance you get, you test drive it. Every chance you get test drive. Um, is it ever done? Fuck. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, 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 I struggle with this one because there'll be things that I've put together for a project or for a thing and it's out there and I'm like, okay, it's, it's, it's off to college, right? It, the kids are out of the house. Like I can relax again. And then two days later or a week later, a better idea of that same thing, that same, right. And you're like, <laughs> fuck. And then you're thinking, okay, 2.0, I guess. I think Paul Harris is the one that created the 2.0 concept. I'm pretty sure. He was just like, okay, we'll just put it on the next one. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so um, and so you can do that. You can do that. I started to do other things like for customers. I was like, well, I don't want them to pay. I don't think it's fair to pay for the next idea that's, that's the same trick, that it just feels like it's another part of it, but it's a different thing. But I just don't think it's fair to pay. So what I used to do, when I had all those downloads is if I, if I came up with something, I would put that into the folder. So they would just have it. So that was the new thing. And they would have that because I don't think it's fair to, unless it, unless it is completely different, meaning it's a different gimmick. It's a different setup. It, it, there's a different prop involved. I don't think it's fair to charge a customer twice. I just don't. Mm. Yeah. So I uh, got in and in the, in the interest of, or on the topic of it never being done, I think now is probably a good time. That's a good, a good segue. Look at you, dude. You've done this before. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, once or twice. Once I was or... impressed with that one, actually. You're like, fuck yeah, it. Let's see that works. 
<laughs> we'll make we'll make it work. We'll make it work. But yeah, I mean, Justin, this has been great. Uh, we're getting a lot of love for you in the uh, in the chat room here. Oh the- God, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. This has been a lot of fun and an honor, an absolute honor. Definitely. Well, we will have to do, we'll have to get back together and do it again because yeah. as mentioned, it is never done. That's right. That's exactly right. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for everybody for coming. Uh, thank you so much, Justin Miller. Thank you, Will, for taking the... Thank the- you, Will. Love you, brother. Hey, my pleasure. Love you, too. you the fantastic. I absolutely thank love you, you, dude. The thank stuff you. that you showed today. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks again, everybody, for the threes. Justin, where can we support you outside of, you know, watching your stuff on Magic? www.pornhub.com. Uh, no. Um- <laughs> you got stocks? You yeah. Got well, that's, yeah. <laughs> I, have stock in, I have stock in Pornhub. It's uh, Viagra. Um Mentalsites.com, M-E-N-T-A-A, M-E-N-T-A-L, Mental Sites, S-I-G-H-T-S, Mentalsites.com. That's my website. I got, uh, I got, can I show you one more? Can I do one more? Oh my God, yeah, of course. And this is, this is something, I want to push this because this is a new thing, so that's why. Uh, appreciative of your time and, and, uh, and aware of the time you're spending here. I'm very happy. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, two two of our attendees left when I said when I started doing all those thank yous. They were uh, like, "Oh, we're done." So now everyone that stayed till the end, now you know, guys. Sometimes there's an after credits scene. I'm like M Night Shyamalan or like a, a like right. a D, like right. a DC or go. Marvel movie, a DC or Marvel movie. You got to stay in the fucking seats, kids. <laughs> um, so uh, this, I'm really proud of this. Me and Adam Wilbur came up with this. Um, we're very very happy with this. It's a neat little packet trick, but it's, it's just so much fun. So people always ask me, you know, like, it's so, do you carry decks of cards with you all the time? And the answer is really not, I don't. Because if I do that, uh, I, I lose pocket space. I have people sign their names on cards. I lose cards. A lot of things can happen. So I kind of go, I kind of go with a different thing. Um, I carry four cards with me. I carry four cards with me. It's an easier process, actually. And these cards, they're not special or unique in any way. King of spades, eight of hearts, nine of spades, queen of hearts. But I do want to ask you, and we'll go with Will. We'll get Will to do this. Um, There's only one answer that you can give that's right. So I'm kind of curious, Will. I'm kind of curious if you can do this for me. I just want you to name one card, and it is not a force. You can name any card you want to. Queen of Hearts, Nine of Spades, Eight of Hearts, uh, or King of Spades. Uh, King of Spades. Is there a reason why you chose the King of Spades? Out of the Queen of Hearts, Nine of Spades, and Eight of Hearts. No, it called to me. And you, you would agree that wasn't a force or anything like that, yes? No force whatsoever. God damn it, Will. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. It couldn't have gone any other way except the way it's going right now. I know, I know, I know. I get it. You got a lot of questions. First question is like, when the fuck did the cards disappear? (laughs) The next question might be, what the fuck is really happening? Why don't I see the cards? And where are the cards? And I get that, man. I totally understand. The problem is, is sometimes it's right underneath your nose, right underneath your nose. And they turn this over. And of course, this says wallet. Ah, no. You see, there's been a wallet here the whole time. I, I, I don't know if I told you that. Um, what was the card you said? Uh, King of Spades. King of Spades. I have one envelope inside this wallet. Hmm. It couldn't have gone any other way. I love that trick. Thanks, man. It's That's called awesome. what? It's called what? Where wallet? And um, you get all the cards, you get the wallet, you get the spe- envelopes, you get everything. Um, it's a really fun routine. It's a fun little packet thing. It turns into a whole different, con- it's just, it's a very strange, strange effect. Um, and it feels like it's finished, doesn't it? I love the, the idea that it's just finished. Yeah, It's just yeah. there, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I have two different options on the website. Just a real quick plug. If yeah, you guys yeah don't mind. plug everything you want, man. Um, so if you want me to make the cards themselves, I can easily do that. It's a little bit more expensive. I charge $50 for that. You get the wallet, you get everything, whatever, all made up, ready to go. Or I can give you all the props and then you can make the cards yourself. That's only 25. It just does take a lot longer. It takes a lot a, a, a more time to put the cards together. And, but once they're together, um, they are, they're, 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 they're ready for life. Like you don't have to do anything else ever again. And the reset is, uh, Right there, we're reset. 
nice. for that. This goes back. It's perfect for table hopping. Perfect. I mean, it's and what I love about it more than anything is that it has this really nice feel of pocket space. Just goes inside, comes out, and everything's done in a wallet. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hold, did it? Does it? I don't know if I asked this question. Mm -hmm. uh, answer it how you will. Does it always go like that? For that one card? No. Uh -uh. They can pick any card they want to. No, no. I mean, does it always? Does it always? The, the, is the track always the same? Does it always go the well, same? Well, I mean, with the with the what and the where's and the why's, yes. But you can customize it. This is this is the one of the cool uh, ways. If you don't want me to make the whole set for you guys, then you can customize it with your own um, the, the props, and you can make them any words you want. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I but I think the what where uh, moment. I I like that like www moments, right? It's oh, just no, like, that, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I was yeah. referring to. Um, the uh, the wallet, I think. Is it always is it, is it always in that envelope? Always in that always in that yes. wallet? Yes, yes. No yes. way. Yes. Oh, okay, fooled. Yes. Fooled like yes. crazy. Yeah, love it's it. not a, it's not a gimmick wallet at all. It's not in any way. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Great stuff. Yeah. Okay, so mentalsites.com is that where they pick that up? Yep, right on the front page, you'll see the uh, brand new uh, uh, image for it. And um, yeah, so that and then I got uh, the Caps coins that are just, they're crazy. They're a lot, I, I got a lot of new stuff. I got like three new releases I'm really happy about. Cylinder and coins and, and the Caps stuff. I was really happy to bring uh, to the Magic Fraternity the Caps routine kind of again refreshed and, um, and, and, and brought in a different light. I'm a huge Caps fan, gigantic. Nice. And um and I was I wanted to see that routine again. And Tim Conover was a brother, and he he passed away, and he was the only person doing it at that time. And there was really nobody else doing that routine or any of that that form of that routine. And, no, no, uh, at all, D'Souza is another major Caps fan. Yeah, does he do does he do the Caps the Chinese coin? I, I don't know. I don't know. But I he, would love to see if he does, Caps. man. Definitely contact this, uh, Mark. Yeah, definitely. Um, I but I scoured to look for all of the coins and the silk and everything, and I found the perfect ones. Yeah, you get you get the two big fucking five inch coins, dude, that just are so beautiful. You get the uh, the dollar size coins. You get a two inch coin and a three inch coin plus a black uh, it's, uh, double silk, and then a coin clip for the three inch coin, um, and then a silver replica uh, Morgan dollar. But you you provide your own purse. It's a great routine if nobody's had it. And also, real quick, just a plug. Yeah. Just a plug. Um, where's the book at? Here it is. Now, where the fuck is it? All my books here. I can't even see which ones are. Oh, I think it's here. Yeah. This book right here. Well, actually, I'll show you a couple books. Two real, two real quick. All right. These two books. A must I, read I, section. I swear by, and, and you won't be able to find this anywhere probably, but if you can get it, Simply Harky. Simply Harky is one of the greatest creative books out there. This was David Harky. He left magic a long time ago, but this, this, this book is absolutely incredible. The, the, the magic and the ideas and the routines in here are just brilliant and original and different. And just, I love that kind of stuff. And then Ken Brooks Magic Place. I mean, a classic of magic, right? Um, but this is where, this is the only place that you'll find the Caps Chinese coin trick actually explained um, in, in magic history, except for Caps lecture notes, if you have those. Oh, wow. um, so what I've done is I've, I've taken the Caps trick and I've turned it, I've just changed certain things about it. And it, I call it, uh, I lovingly and humbly call it a love letter to Caps. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Excellent. Well, you know, again, I'll, I'll roll through these thank yous and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll send out uh, some info and, and we'll put comments down there with all your social media cool. stuff and the websites that we- I appreciate that. Mentioning. And uh, yeah, so thanks again, Will. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Will. Thank See you guys. Thank you everyone for watching now live and everyone who's, who's going to oh, watch this later. His website one more time. Mentalsites.com. Mentalsites.com. Yes, all sir. All right. Thanks again, everyone, for attending and we will catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Magic Flix is the world's fastest growing online magic learning platform. From classic collections like the Greater Magic Video Library to the best in modern magic, Magic Flix is the only way to learn magic online in today's world. 
Use the promo code on your screen to start your no-obligation free trial today.